Shake him. Shake him. Shake him. <laughs> There's nothing. You're not shaking him. What a tune. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sam O'Reilly with a Fight Talk podcast. Myself and Richie Gray, who is devouring, is that right? What you are devouring? A plate of lunch that my wife has made Mrs. him. Mrs. O has provided us with some goods today, so. Mrs. O has. Uh, hooked me up with I, some grub. I don't know why. I think it's because we've got the poshest guest we've ever had on here. Maybe something to do with that. I have never been offered a drink. Fuck like, off. When I've asked for a drink Fuck in the past, you've gone, you know, the kitchen. Today, I've had two coffees already and a bottle of water. Not and a whole fucking plate. Not even tap water. You've got bottles. Things have changed. Fucking here, treating mate. you too much. Well, <laughs> oh, dear. We are joined by Boxing Social's Rob Tebbett. What's up? How are you, sir? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming, mate. It's a bit of a journey. Yeah, everything's kind of. Because I live in Bedford, everything in London really is kind of two hours away, so. It's standard, really. Yeah. It's not because I like you any more or any less than no, anybody I res- else. I respect that. That's fair enough. But no, less. yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Probably less, yeah. Probably less. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair enough. Um, mate, jam-packed weekend. Like, literally Friday, we had MTK, then Matram. Then Saturday, we had Warren, and then World Boxing Super Series, and fucking... It just stuff everywhere. I did my homework on the stuff you gave me, but I don't know if I watched more than... I don't know if I watched I, I, I watched little tiny bits of the World Boxing Super Series on Saturday, but... I'm sure we've got more than enough to go through. I don't know if you listen, but what tends to happen is I watch what Sam tells me to watch. But yeah, that's kind of the idea of being on a boxing podcast. If he doesn't tell me to watch it, usually I'll just come in and freestyle it, and then people are like, you never watch the boxing podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I am going to replace you soon. If you, don't, you know, I've been watching boxing. Friday but... afternoon, so what do I need to watch this week? Shouldn't you know? Isn't that your job, being on a podcast? Oh, I don't know. There's people who make a living out of not watching boxing and talking about it, so I wouldn't be that pissed off. Why, why are you going to go at me? I've even got you a fucking gig commentating with me off the back of my not watching boxing. Well, let's see how much they pay. I already told you how much you're getting paid. Did you? Yeah. I didn't read the small print. Public don't. negotiations. <laughs> Sign up live on Sky yeah. Sports News. Yeah. Possibly donating £100 to charity, by the way, out of that. So I'm, I don't know what I'm getting, and what I'm getting, I'm giving to charity, yeah? No. Is that right? Only £100 of it. Only, how much am I getting? More than £100. Pound. Am I? Yeah. Right. Well, we'll see. We'll talk about it. I'm very confused, to be honest. Only because I was supposed to do a charity ride from London to Bruges, and now I can't do it because the dates crashed. But I'd already agreed to this first, but oh, I don't okay. let the charity down. Right. So the money we're going to get paid. So can't you take it out of your side? No, well, because we're a fucking team. <laughs> <laughs> How has your week been? How has your week been, Richie Gray? Why are you asking questions? I put food in my mouth. <laughs> you did that on purpose. I wanted to see how professional you were, how you could deal with it quickly. You don't me enough to be professional around here. <laughs> Rob, how's your week been, my friend? Yeah, it's been good. I've actually had this week off. I had it booked as annual leave. Um, I booked it when I fought um, the Dillian White was gonna Dillian White show I think was supposed to be on April yeah. the twentieth back then like the big pay per view yeah, extravaganza yeah. that Herm was talking about which never happened. Um so I kind of looked at that, saw Khan Crawford, Crawford Khan around about the same time and thought, yeah, I'll need the next week off. Yeah. So I had the next week off. Um so yeah I've been at home really trying to get a little bit of family time in. Uh watched some of the boxing over the weekend, missed some and then caught up with it. But yeah. it's quite nice actually to sit down and watch a fight and not have to kind of worry about you didn't put the articles up or anything no like nothing that, no? no Andy Beautiful. Andy Puriwell shout out Andy Puriwell um, from Boxing Social was, was doing the whole week so from Monday onwards until well he's working right now um, while I'm here doing this um, this is work well, yeah, I get. Yeah, well, you're not really allowed to say that because my missus will kill me. So I had to try. Okay. To, I had to try. <laughs> I'm and helping conv- a friend. Yeah, try and convince her why me doing a podcast on my last day off was a was a good idea. Um, but no, yeah. So I've, I've I've kind of tried to take it easy where I can and recharge my batteries. So um, yeah, well deserved. Good, man. Well deserved. Thank you very much. What, what have you been doing? <sighs> um, no one cares. Uh, Moving on. Oh, ouch! <laughs> <laughs> you were linesman today. I was, I was linesman. Yeah. A bit of exercise. That's not really. I just sort of shuffled like a penguin, <laughs> side to side a little bit, like a fucking turtle. But the ball goes off the field. They're like, wait, do come you know what? Actually, coming down. I took a photo. The referee um, on the pitch next to me was Linus. I'm convinced it was Linus. It, I'm real. I didn't know Linus was a was a referee on his Sundays. So yeah, it was good times. Yeah, you just got you got to help the kids out. I have football Saturdays and Sundays with my kids, so I'm fucking used to it. You know what I mean? But it's all good. All good. Um, should we talk some boxing? Yeah. Right. Friday night, we'll start MTK. If we go in chronological, we, might, we probably won't miss any. Do you know what I mean? Mm. MTK show we'll start with because we, uh, I didn't go. And from what I watched on the telly, it looked pretty quiet in there. Yeah, I watched a few of them fights on there, actually. I spoke to one or two people that were there and they said it was fairly quiet. 
I, do you know what? I've got a feeling, right? Commentary's gone downhill a bit. The commentary has, and you know what? Um, do you know what as a joke, think, no, we can say as, as a joke, a, it has gone downhill. Not even as a joke, honestly, that fight Jamani had mm-hmm. with Liam Wells, mm-hmm. I like both of them actually, I sparred, sparred with Liam, he's, he's a middleweight, mate, he's a middleweight. Yeah. Jamani's done a lot to go up to that fucking weight. That was a good fight, entertaining fight. Mm-hmm. You commentators are making me snooze. Like, the commentators are making the fight boring. Who's commentating on Barry like Jones, yeah. For some reason... I don't listen. I'm not even being bitter. I'm not even being bitter. <laughs> it comes not, cr- not, people think no, that because no, no, you no, said no, commentating MTK. No, yes, I said it on, in, on on Twitter. Bit of a joke. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Commentator's gone downhill. But on, seriously, when you watch a fight, the commentators bring it up. They're supposed to build it up, mm-hmm. make it better than it even looks. Do you know what I mean? A good fight is a good fight. With good commentary, commentary, it can make sound even better. When I was watching that fight, which was a good fucking fight, mm-hmm. at, t- at the time, sometimes I was thinking, I'm making a good fight sound dull. Mm. Who else was doing it? Because Barry's like Is a... Is Stedman? Alex Stedman? Yeah. yeah so yeah, they're, they're yeah. MTK's boys. They're, oh, right. they're on every show. Uh, yeah, I think I saw something like that come up. I've not... I've there not are times when they've been good. There are times when they've been good. A lot of people have... like They, they rate Barry Jones as a commentator. Like, but they if you see, if, in, in, in general, he's a mostly positive mm. comments about him. Personally, I... I no, listen, they know, what they you know, said. No, he does know his stuff. They know their stuff, but, but he, not he comes across dull. They're not, yeah, it's dull. No, it's, they know their stuff. They probably don't tell, everyone knows more about boxing than me. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but they don't make it exciting at all. They do not make it exciting at all. There was a, th- a period in there where it was about 35 seconds where they didn't say a single word. Mm, yeah. It is better. I, what, I didn't watch the show. I don't really... I know I've watched shows where Barry, Barry Jones has commentated on, um, but I don't really have much of an opinion. I've not, not commentated like you guys have. But like one thing I will say is, do you ever watch like the American international commentary? Feed? Yeah, I, I, that is bad. Yeah. So like you get like two or three rounds go by, and they're trying to. I guess it's probably because boxing's such like a such like a fringe sport in America. They literally tell you like the whole fighter's backstory yeah, for the first mid, couple of rounds. Yeah. So like unless they somebody gets do knocked that, down, they used to do that in in British boxing. They used to do that quite a lot, but they stopped doing it over the last year or two. Well, I think. Literally, you can watch the first two rounds and. Not one thing Stevie, he's spoken about. Father of four, yeah. married man, <laughs> you know, lives out, lives what? <laughs> he's a scaffolder by day. Yeah, scaffolder by day. Yeah, yeah. Or walking his dog. Yeah. No, it's, it, I, my honest opinion is, well, I, I, it's a, it's a theory because MTK have now signed Barry Jones and Alex Stephen, mm-hmm. right? Well, he Barry Jones also works for BT. He worked last mm-hmm. night on the Warren show. Yeah. So Friday night MTK, Saturday night Warren. I don't know if that has anything to do with the reason that MTK. Now, predominantly, Lee might correct me, they're predominantly Friday nights, as far as I'm aware. I don't know if I it's... Based their shows around a commentary team. I, don't, I doubt it, but that atmosphere last night was not indicative of an MTK a and a Lee and show specifically. That, on Friday night, it looked dead. I might be, Listen, I wasn't there. I wasn't there, so Friday hands nights, up. Friday nights, for you, to, to the world, it doesn't, may not seem like a big big deal, but to a fighter, selling tickets for a Friday night is hard. Everyone's got to get home What's from the work. Is it just Everyone's got to get home from work on a Friday and get to the venue. So if you're, let's say you're working in London, for example, and you live where I live in Brentwood, everyone's got to get back from London, finishing at four or five o'clock, not getting home till six. They've got to get changed and get back to London. They want to get to half seven, eight. They could miss your fight. So a lot yeah. of people yeah, don't bother. Sense. A lot of people don't bother on a Friday for that reason. Saturdays, people think Friday and Saturday is better than a weekday. All that. Listen, there's a big difference. A Friday might as well be a Wednesday when it comes to trying to sell tickets. Mm. I don't actually. I've don't. I've never actually watched an MTK show, whether yeah. it's on TV or, or been there. Um, Lee's, Lee shows are. Well, I don't know about the other guys that do the MTK shows, yeah. but Lee shows are pretty good. He, he, he always gets guys. a good. Yeah, they look nice. The they fight. Do. I like that they has a lot of the same fighters. Some people ain't, don't give that a positive feedback, but I quite like it because then a lot of the people that when I box on MTK, they get to know the other fighters as well. So they get yeah. more than just one fight out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they get to see the other fighters progress as well. They get like a whole team of fighters they get to support. If you MTK like. is changing massively. Obviously, they've got this this deal now, is it? With ESPN Plus, yeah. I mean, that's insanity. That's a great deal. That is insane. And you can slowly see a change. Like they're signing more fighters that clearly aren't on ticket deals, which yeah. small hall scene, everyone knows, it's predominantly tickets fighters. That's that's what it is. I can't imagine Chantel Cameron was on a ticket deal, do you know what I mean? Mm. And a lot of these um, these imports they bring in, whether they're Kazakhs mm. or... They're not going to be on ticket Uzbeks deals. Uzbeks. Yeah, Uzbeks, exactly. So it's changing. And MTK are right in the middle... Are they small hall going big? It's 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 a it's a weird situation right now, and it looks like a crossroads where obviously they're trying to push on. They've got the commentary and yeah, open the door. Cool. I mean, from a very very, I mean, as I say, I've not watched their shows, and that's just I don't I don't I don't actually know why, but from the outside looking in, obviously I know Coogan well, 
So like it looks like they are somewhat in a transition between potentially having been small hall to doing something that's bigger. That's ESPN, the like. ESPN deal is is great. That's fantastic for them. But that would obviously signal that they're moving on to yeah. all due respect, bigger and better things in the yeah. future. That, that's what it feels like. It feels like they're kind of stuck in mm. between right now. They're mm. trying to grow. They're taking on fighters. <laughs> I think exactly the reason why I think they're taking on fighters like this that ain't selling tickets because they've got more potential. If you like, they believe these people have got more potential. So they're trying to look for fighters that can win titles rather than just bring them in money. And mm-hmm. then they're trying to have a mix of both. Mm-hmm. Some of the fighters that can sell tickets, some of the fighters now that can, you know, win titles. The, the hard thing for me is someone who goes to so many small hall shows in the, like last year, I lost count in most Saturdays, whether it's a good win or British Warriors who have definitely upped their game and MTK last year, I think they... The problem you have is, wouldn't you prefer to be dominant in your own scene first? Because it, you can't say they are the standout small hall promoter in this country. Personally, it's up there. There's, there's some good fighters. They all have their pros and cons. They're all doing their own thing and they all work well in what they do. But they're not far and away above everyone to go, okay, we're ready for the next step. Why, what's the massive rush? Why, why? Do need, why do they need to compare themselves to someone else? They don't. They don't, they don't have to be better than anyone else to move on. If they feel they're ready to move on, they can move on. Fair. Do you know what? I'm actually I don't actually want a promotion because Steve deserved the promotion before me. <laughs> no. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying go by what. Do, do you know what I mean? I, no, I, under, I, I understand. I just they've probably got a plan in place for after this amount of years, this amount of years, this amount of years. Regardless of where where their progression is, they're going to keep moving towards that goal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just feels very quick. You see the progression Lee has made from that first MTK show to where um, what was the last one we were at February or wherever. It, his progression's been excellent, and you can see it. The caliber of fighter, the caliber of fights. Mm. He loves a 50 50. It's getting better and better. And I don't want to see that that part fall off mm. because they're trying so hard to reach heights that they may never reach. That's, mm. that, you know what I mean? That's my thinking. But with, with regards to the fights on Friday night, our mate Jamani went in the away corner again. Did he box a like, super welter or something? Yeah. But Isn't he like a light Liam he was Wells, lightweight? Liam Wells is a middleweight. He didn't weigh in at middle, but he weighed in at 10, 10 11, so 11 stone. Listen, Liam Wells is a middleweight. He's a big dude, isn't he? He's fucking big. It's the first time I've seen Jamani in with someone I thought. He's not wham, Liam, he's but big. he's got big, thick legs on him. That's no, so what you can always legs. tell as a fighter. Like, the yeah. legs, ankles, like neck, Yeah, it's shoulders. just body, just body frame. width, frame, bone density. Yeah. I like Liam. Liam will be the same as Jamani. He'll fight anyone. He will fight anyone. Are you sick of him? Yeah, I, I, him I don't know. But he'll fight I thought he won the fight. I thought he won it by a couple rounds. Five rounds is it's ridiculous. But it's boxing, isn't it? There's a lot of dodgy scores. Listen, it's not even dodgy. It's just that different angles of the, of the ring, mate. You do see it completely. Okay, let's fight. be political. It was different angles that scored it. Regardless of what you think, <laughs> listen. I'm biased. Jamani's my friend. I love. I think Jamani won by six rounds, if I'm honest. But no, I think he won by 11 rounds. And you know, um, <laughs> and oh, I, I don't know if I can say this, actually. He's due to box Louis Green on Saturday. And the week after, I can't say who he's fighting, but you know the guy very, very well. So I'll tell you after when we don't record. Why do that? Don't do because, that. Pause because the because he's... Tr- no, I can't now. because Sean texted me last night and said, what do you think of... And I said, oh, Richie says this and this, but I can't tell you his name. So, I, well, I, do you know what? I can't say it. It's not announced, but um, it's a good it's a good fight. It's another when, what day? undefeated. <laughs> Don't start doing that in the podcast. Is it him? Is it him? I'm Throwing out names. I'll tell you straight after. I'll tell me now. As soon as I press pause, tell me now. I'm not going to tell you now. Tell me now. Give me a clue. Who was the main event? Has he got two arms? No. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. One arm. Um... Who else was on that for? Chantel de- Cameron. Defeated? Yes, he is. He's got over 10 wins. But you're not a massive, you don't rate him massively, but he's a nice guy. Anyway, can we move on? He bashes me up. <laughs> so Chantel Cameron won, right? Chantel Cameron. Stoppage. Stoppage. She can punch, man. She can fight. She's my favourite female to watch. She can fight. You, yeah. You've been in around when she was in Cyclone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think she's the most exciting female fighter in this country? Yes, I do. Um... I, I've never ever professed to be a massive female boxing aficionado. I don't men, know many that are. No, it's, like, the, it's just, me being, just me being completely honest. Um, but from what I've seen and from what I've heard and what I've been told by reliable people, she can really punch. I mean, I've seen it and she's really exciting. She's really exciting, Chantel. Yeah. It'd be really interesting. I'd love to see her fight Katie Taylor. Love to see that fight. Because yeah. I think everything that kind of Katie Taylor has from a skill set point of view that potentially Chantel maybe doesn't or a different skill set. Chantel's got that power and she can really punch, which is something that you just don't see in yeah. female boxing. I no, agree. And she goes, for, like, I like that she goes for the kill. Mm. She's she's not happy to hit her and sit back. She wants finishes mm. and stoppages and she has more than most in this country for women, mm. I'm sure. So yeah, she's, she's exciting. What'd you, the MTK move, obviously there's a lot of stuff behind it. She mm. was public about, mm. she didn't feel she was getting enough attention and a push yeah. and stuff, but MTK is, it seems to be a place that a lot of people have fallen into. O'Hara fell into MTK and 
Now, Chantel, is, it, is is that now the go-to place? For I really wouldn't know, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, I've got a massive stable of fighters. Something's attracting people to go there. I've not spoken to anybody about kind of the inner workings of their deals with MTK, but I mean, it seems like a viable option if you want to be managed by somebody. That seems to be a good place to go, it's right? marketing, lads. It's marketing. Good marketing. Fighters are attracted to it. That's, it's as simple as that. Boxing is a business. That's it. It's just marketing. They're great at marketing. They may not. They may or may not be the best team to be with. Their marketing is so good. They look like the best to be with. Mm. And they've got Frampton. They've got. You've Fury, been talking about. Yeah, I mean, they've got some huge. You've been talking about yeah. this ESPN deal and all that. Yeah, the and that's the listen, potential so as well. Fighter turns pro. <laughs> fighter turns pro, and you can sign with this promoter who puts on a small hall show once or twice a year. Or you can be on MTK. Tell your mates I'm on MTK. Shout out Joe Pyle. We go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say anything? Shout out Joe Pyle. We, uh, you can be get, you go on MTK. They're they're associated with ESPN. You know we got this. This they're easy to sign with because they'll take on most boys if they can sell a ticket. And then you can tell all your mates one of my fights could be on ESPN because you know MTK. Yeah. I sign MTK. Sign on this person. That's all it means. That's all it means. They're doing shows on the top of skyscrapers in Dubai. Listen, just, just, just that's crazy. it's all about it's all about for the boys. It's all about what you can tell your mates. Is, it, is that it? That's, that's for half of them. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll get to it later, but last of these, half of these fucking deluded boxers ain't nowhere near as good as they think they are just want to better tell their mates how good they are. By signing with people like MTK that have got big names now with them, like they've got a lot of big, big fighters. Fury, they're, yeah. doing, they're doing the SBM thing. They've got a lot of live streams. Looks great on the fighters. They get sort of live fights and all that. Yeah. The commentary over the top. It's great production. Great marketing. Great reason for boxers that to sign with them, really. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's a good shot. For some boys... Steve Goodwin's a great promoter, a great manager. Some will, some will sign with MTK just because they can do live stream, even though they don't realise they actually lose sales over being <laughs> yeah. live streamed. But listen, they're paid to be, they're paid to fight, not think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with a lot of you fucking boxers. If they were, if they used their brain a little bit more, they wouldn't get stitched up, as a lot of them tend to do nowadays. I'm not saying that any of these guys are stitched them up. No, no, no. I'm not no, saying I'm, MTK. I'm, I'm talking about in general. I like. boxed on a lot of MTK shows and they were fucking good to me. MTK, MTK was always good to me, but. There's a reason why boxers are attracted to it, and it's everything that the market of MTK is fucking superb. That's yeah. why they've done so well. Yeah, agreed. In my opinion, agreed. Um, the show, yeah, that, that's, there's not really much that else to talk about. Samuel Antwi beat Sir Osgul. Oh, he's massive. Did, he's, didn't he lose his title on the scales? Yeah. He didn't make world well, yeah, weight limit, so he's lost his seven area title on the scales. Big boy, though, wasn't and he? then beat Shah Osgul. Mm. Shame. Big See Shah Osgul box um, when he boxed Victor Postel. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Got stopped by Mikey Saki and Brent. Yeah, in a strange one. Postal, I don't know, just kind of went through the gears a little bit. He had a good win um, last night, was it? Postal? He was back in the yeah, he was back was in the last, last night? night, yeah, got a good win. Um, but yeah, I saw, I saw Cyril Osgo, I mean, going into that, I think everybody had seen the fact that, you know, the level he'd kind of boxed at, and, yeah. and Postal still got a lot left in the tank, and, you know, it kind of was a bit of a weird fight. Postal seemed to have kind of dragged it out. Where is Scotland? Or? Yeah, yes, that was yeah. on the Taylor Martin undercard. That was it. Well, World Boxing Super Series. So he got Stranger. beat, right, Osgo? I was going to be, yeah, Sam, oh. Sammy Lansby's massive. Yeah, it's 10 rounds though, it went 10 rounds, it just lost. It's ra- just too big for him, I think. Just, yeah. Just, it's too big. Yeah. Rich Osgood's not a massive puncher, despite the, way, the aggression the he puts rumors, on the pads. Yeah. Just not a big puncher. When someone is bigger than you, you need a bit of strength, I think, to mm. push him around a bit. Not Osgood was staying on him, but long arms, big long levers, just catching him on his Interesting weight. Interesting to see what happened with that Southern Area World Weight title now. Um, it's like all up in the air. I'm sure Congo could get a crack, but then Congo's now fighting Tyro Nurse. That's a good fight. A good fight. I like that fight. That's on the British Warriors show next month. So who knows? While we're hovering around the subject, sorry, I'm speaking with my mouth full. Um, who does British Warriors social media? <laughs> I don't know, but I love that guy. Whoever yeah. it is, his name. <laughs> I don't know if it's public knowledge. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to. You know. I don't know if it's public knowledge, but it's Jordan. Right, it's okay. Jordan. Good bloke. He's a he's funny fucker. Jordan, you know Jordan. He worked on he worked on Knockout London. Uh, magazine. If you're listening to this, you do a good job, man. I really good like. I really it's like your Twitter. Social media is really good. Brilliant. Brilliant. And if uh, no one knew that, um, then just tell me and I'll cut it. Or just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. once it's edited and put out. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, yeah no, he's, he's a good bloke. And Mo Pryor, I think he does. He, he likes to put on good fights, mm. and he he believes in his stable. You know, he, Alfie Price is his, and he let him box on Warren last night. He wants to push his fight. Mm. The same as same as Steve Goodwin does. So no, Absolutely. yeah, definitely. Campbell, who um, used to box with Chavez Campbell, Chavez, he was with Malik. No. Then he left and went with No Prior, No Prior, and he's just left there and gone with Goodwin. Goodwin. Does anyone know why? He's your mate. I have no idea why he's done that, but you're the one who used to bash shit out of him in the gym. I never used to do that to him. No. It's not fair. It's not. You said that literally in the last pod you bashed shit out of him. 
since that. He might have done. Exact words were. He, he came in flash, so I bashed oh, the shit no, out of him. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. The first time, yeah. yeah. First time he came in, he was. I've actually there's photos of him before, like being all cocky on photos, like walking around the gym. I've had 130 fights, I've bashed him up, I'm going to smash you up. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I was like, all right, Rich, listen, just do what you want for a round. <laughs> <laughs> I just fucking steam trained him, blew myself out, but it was enough to make him fucking <laughs> sit on the back foot for the rest of the time. <laughs> Um, Friday night, let's talk about the. Which one do you try and say it? I don't know what you're talking about. Trissa Ket, Rung Versailles. Oh, yeah, come on. Come on, come on, don't say that. <laughs> this, is, this is more Rob's wheel, um, wheelhouse, I think. Yeah, I think it's probably worth noting that. I mean, I'm not massively clued up on the small hall scene, so before anybody kind of listens to this. And, <laughs> that kind of didn't say nothing. Well, no, this is the, this is the, I'm very honest about that. I mean, if I need to know something about small hall, I'll speak to you or speak to Martin or somebody like that. Um, Fuck but, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I can, I'll only ever speak to you. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Friday's the zone card. Um, interesting, very very good card, man. I mean, like the the main event was uh, as expected, a good fight. I don't think it was as competitive as a lot of people were expecting it to be. Me, um, a hundred percent. I was on that. I was in that camp. Estrada just is a brilliant fighter. I mean, he really, 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 really good. Um, and I think Rungvasar. I don't know why he was boxing orthodox for like well, the majority exactly of the fight. What I couldn't I don't get my head around it. I think he had a plan to box. But he won the first fight just, in Southport. I don't you know, really I think get he, I think why he, he, he did it. stayed so long orthodox. Like it clearly wasn't working. He was yeah. getting out of boxing. He, he must have had a plan. I think he'll blow out or something. He, he must have planned. And then in the end, he's thought, I've got to cut the round. I need to do something. This just ain't working. Sometimes it takes time for he had success. Yeah. Or whatever, that was, that was his most successful round. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it was because Estrada was kind of getting late in the fight and he'd slowed down a little bit, or maybe it was just the, the success that he'd already had. As maybe he thought he'd lose just so he can get a third fight and get more money. <laughs> 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 it's a business before it is a boxing match. I, I, it's a good fight, yeah. though. I thought Estrada was excellent. I thought it was absolutely excellent. I, I'll be, I don't tend to watch a lot of the smaller mm. weights. Mm. Um, Superfly has had this sort of last year or so, oh, 18 months. months yeah. yeah, since the Chocolatito among the yeah, side yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the Chocolatito Slayer is what Rung Versailles was known as in my head. That's the only way I can remember him. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's a weird one because <coughs> who do we have in this country that way? Superfly, Cow Your Fire. Cow Your Fire, yeah. world champ, right? Yeah. Why do you think it doesn't really translate over here? They're all in America. All the big Superfly cards are in LA and mm. over here, no one... Well, to start with, so, like, Chocolatito was kind of, was given this push by HBO, wasn't he? And he, that fight, so the first Rung Versai fight was actually on the undercard of Golov, Golovkin Jacobs. Okay. So that's kind of like building it and then it went from, you know, that whole time with Tom Loeffler, it was like the super fly stuff. And I think like they marketed it really well and it just kind of took off. And all of the fights were great fights. I mean, you guys know better than anybody that, you know, it doesn't always have to be the most recognisable names out there to make a great fight. And mm-hmm. that's kind of what happened. And then it's just kind of blossomed from there. I think over here, I don't know... <sighs> Potentially not enough time has been given to them. I think since Yafai won the title against Conception, I've not made much of his opposition at all. What's Charlie Edwards? Charlie Edwards is a flyweight. flyweight but he boxed at Superfly. Yeah. So he won the British yeah, title. He won the British title Superfly. Superfly. That's but right. now he's down to flyweight. They do around a lot. Then wait yeah, yeah, well, is that, is that so, so, close close so close together. Yeah, so close together. Four pounds. So. Yeah. That's a big shit for an adult. Like a normal <laughs> sized adult. For a grown man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. That. It's, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need like a Charlie Edwards. We need an Edwards fight. Yafai fight over here, and that to yeah. kind of capture the imagination a little bit. Because I mean, over here, even if Yafai, I mean Yafai boxed, um, I forgot his name now, but he boxed over in um, LA. His name would come or will come to me probably later on. Um, and he didn't exactly wow on that card, but you're talking about him boxing at four, or five o'clock in the morning, so nobody over no here is seeing that. Yeah. So if he boxes a Charlie Edwards. Or gets, like a, gets a chocolatito over. I mean, he's not the fighter he once was. And again, he doesn't really have the, the recognition over here that he does in the States. Then that could help. But I think the only real way that's going to capture the imagination is if Edwards and your fly. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, who, Jesse Vargas was on that, wasn't he? Jesse Vargas <laughs> was on that card. Uh, he, he, do you know what? He boxed Humberto Soto, who was due to fight Josh Taylor. Just yeah. a, a, I mean, how many weights? Is, two weights is another super lightweight. And what did they box that? They super, boxed the super well. Super well. Soto's shot and old and fifty years old, and then he's going up to lightweight, mate. Yeah, and I felt Jesse. They just, I don't know what his fascination with him. And he's got the <laughs> highest uh, purse on the night. He's like he's he's done really well from like a media point of view. He's done like a lot of um, he's done commentary and he's been an analyst in the past and you know he's been in with decent names, ex world champion. Grown up, he fought, fought Manny Pacquiao as well. Did he fight Pacquiao? Fought Pacquiao, oh. yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, he's kind of been around. He's in the mix for quite a few fights. I mean, him and Cal Brook have been linked for a long time. Yeah. I see somebody else today on the way here that he's been linked with, but I can't remember who it was. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think the standout fight on that card was TJ Dehenny against Daniel Roman. 100%. That was a great fight, man. Great, great fight. fight. So impressed with TJ Dehenny. Where's he based? I know he's obviously he's Irish. Is he based? I in? don't actually know. Because he's sure. MTK. Yeah, yeah he's, he's an MTK. MTK. So until Charlie Edwards won the world title, he was their only world champion. Yeah. TJ Dehenny. And I thought he boxed brilliantly. I think it was it was harsh. He didn't get a stop, uh, a knockdown. There was a in the seventh round. Yeah, he was definitely was really a putting it on him. He worked, but he didn't. I think Roman's very good. I yeah, think Roman's yeah. very good. He he he's one of them. He doesn't do anything spectacularly. Nothing stood out to me with Roman. Like, oh, he's exceptional at this or he's great at that. He just mm. had a high work rate, picks his shots well, and he knows when to stay on the back foot and when to push. And mm. that's what won him the fight. Yeah, that was a good fight, man. He's he's impressive. He's a good fighter. Obviously, he boxed um, Donald. I think it was his last fight. The fight before, I can't remember. Yeah. That's a good little division. Cause you got like Isaac Dogbe is rematching Navarrete. It's not a good fight. I it's not don't a good really fight, see really. why you would hate that rematch show. Eh? But I mean, fair play to him. Yeah. Like you know, we kind of slag people off for not wanting to take difficult fights. He's I mean, that seems like a really bad style matchup. Yeah. It but does. he's willing to go back in there to try and win his title back. So fair play. You obviously got Ray Vargas as well. Good fighter. So yeah, that, that, that division's coming along nicely, but no, TJ Dehenny, I thought, was, was, he, he was took excellent. It and he took it so like, straight on the chin. Yeah, yeah. And straight afterwards, I'm not licking his ass, right? But um, Eddie Hearn's excellent. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So I, I, I like that. I, I respected that. And, yeah, um, I'm sure he'll come again. Um, like doing a, Having a performance like that on a platform in America and, you know, really going out and taking your chance he didn't win the fight but I mean I think it's fair to say that his stock would have risen after that and good luck to him I'm sure he'll rebound from that into a, into a good fight or a, a good profile fight so yeah shout out TJ Dehenny good performance uh, let's move on uh, weird noise, uh, <laughs> <coughs> let's move on Frank Warren show let's talk about Frank Warren yeah you laid but I did watch that oh you did yes come cool, on Rich what's that two in a weekend <laughs> Two, three, two or three. I don't know if you know, but I'm on a podcast. So I'll have to. Watch <laughs> <laughs> All the time, yeah. All the time. Frank Warren show Wembley Arena, headlined by eventually Dubois and Larty, which that, almost... that was a banging fight. I really like that. I thought it was a fun fight. I really liked I really that. I thought that. that was a fun fight. Yeah, I yeah. did. I really did. You know, it was off and on and off and on in the week, couldn't it? He couldn't get in the country. They took his visa off him. Something about his visa. Some again, I've been out of the loop, man. So I've not really paid too much attention to it. From what I've seen, he just had visa issues. But this happened when he he tried to box Joe Joyce last year, yeah. right? And I think we were talking about it, and it, and something similar happened then. So and then they let him get on the plane. Yeah. So I mean, that's obviously probably not helped in in you know preparations for either man really. But I thought the fight. I really enjoyed the fight. I think it kind of showed Dubois was better than him most of the time. Yeah. But every now and then he'd come out of his shell. It At was, one point, it, it looked like. Dillian White against Chisora. He tried so hard to fucking take yeah. his head off. He spun round. Yeah. It was as if he was taking punishment and all of a sudden he thought, fuck this, I might as well fight back. And then he sort of forgot about defence and just started throwing bombs yeah. there. In, in the bombs. first round, Dubois had come out like a train. And, yeah. just came, and then I think he got caught in the exchange. I think it was by left hook or something yeah. in the first round. It was, round. High. It was and really then, yeah. high on and the And then Dubois kind of went, oh, okay, so I'm going to try and box this guy. And there's a bit of life in there. And then I think he got caught in the first round and then the second round as well. But... I think while a really fun fight, I think Dubois deserves credit for kind of, you know, going through the fire a little bit. I think it showed. Well. I think it showed kind of where he's at. I think he shouldn't really be. I think it's a good learning fight for Dubois. If he learns from that fight and kind of learns that you can't, because he literally at one point just put his hands down and had a swing out, which yeah. when you're fighting 18, 19 stone fellas, look how good your chin is. That's not really a good thing. <laughs> they said, they, no, they said but it's entertaining. They said, like, yeah. it's really it's exactly entertaining. My point. They said in the commentary. Oh, we don't want to see Dubois do that. City box. I was thinking, nah. <laughs> I do want to see him. All of this bullshit good. that people give Dubois outside the ring for not really being able to talk and sell fights and stuff. You can't tell me that you looked at that make fight and didn't think, fucking hell, that yeah, is it. Yeah, I make really want to make up with it. Now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Agree. But having said that, I mean, if I was looking after Dubois, or if I was thinking, You'd have like, the words. I'd be thinking like, yeah, be fuming. Be yeah. Well, fuming, for your next mate. fight, you just say, look, that was entertaining, but we don't really want to see that again. He got, yeah. he got hurt, visibly yeah. hurt. Yeah. Not only coaches, you know, but fight. they wouldn't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Listen, we had fun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she would say it like that. That was nice. It was entertaining. I liked it. <laughs> But next time we'll box up. No, they'll be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> fuck it out! Larty, Larty was game, man. I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see him. They all fucking fight Nathan Gorman. That's kind of what they've been doing, yeah. right? They do like a merry-go-round of 
and fighters like Kajanu, Kevin Johnson, yeah. and like Lati will be back to fight to Gorman. fight Nathan yeah. Gorman for sure. Probably. But yeah, no, good good for I thought the stoppage was a bit yeah. They stopped him on Yeah, you, you lost your nut. You sent me, me you off. sent me some pisses angry. me off. Whether he was whether he was gone or not, I don't give a fuck. In America, if you get up before they count to ten, if you get up on nine, you're up before ten, it's a ten count. That's what's called a ten count, you count to ten. In Britain, they always stop at eight. Always stop at eight. If you're not up before eight, they count you out. They wave it at like nine. Do you know what annoys me? No, get, no one does here. No, get, no refs here do what. Um, get to the what, eight. Give them a second. No, not not like rest time, but but wipe their gloves. Look at them. Walk towards me. The do rules say that in right? America, right, where they're like moving left and then moving right. And That's one of what the I was first, about to say. The fury. One of the first, yeah. One of the first time I saw that was the fury fight, and like. That's cool, but they also do like I know in New York they have like the the checks before the start of the training. So I mean, the most famous example of that is Wilder Ortiz. After Ortiz was filling Wilder in, he got like an extra minute essentially in between rounds where the, the, the people came up on the yeah the doctor, which is all to do with obviously concussions and, and safety and stuff. But anyway, going way off the point. Yeah, I think I think. No, I, but it I is mean, a good point because if you think about it, the rules state if you're up before 10. You're tall, but no one says you can't have 10 seconds off the ref then to go, is, is, is he okay? Yeah, the ref can stop it To the ref's discretion, yeah. Yeah, that's to the ref's discretion, but in, in England, they seem to stop it at eight, get to 10, and then have a look at him, and then oh, don't count to 10, because then you count them out, but get to the nine. Mm, yeah. You're taught as a boxer, if you go down, take the eight count on your knee. Yeah. In the UK, if you take your eight count, your whole eight count, you're likely the ref's, as you're standing up, they're just going to wave you off at nine. Yeah. So really, to boxers out there, because how many times have you seen a boxer where they've gone on their knee, they've waited, they're watching the ref's count, mm. shut up and the ref waved his arms and they've said the fight and missed time the count. No, did he bollocks? He waved it off at nine. Yeah. They Charles do that. Martin, isn't it? It, it happens, robbed. It yeah. happens a lot. <laughs> it, happens. Robbed. it happens a he lot. He stood his second leg up on ten, didn't he? Yeah. Like, hey, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> he was fucking down five seconds after the count was yeah. finished. Was like, yeah. It just pisses me off that they do it because it happens a hell of a lot. It's not. A, it's a ten count. Mm. I'd, I'd love to see that more, that ref did to Fury. As long as they're up by the ten, Give them five seconds, six sa- seconds. It, saying, there's no rule that you can't. Mm. I'm not saying that he couldn't have stopped the fight still. I'm not saying that that was an early stoppage. All I'm saying is that you stopped him on eight. If you were gonna, st- if you decided to stop him, why didn't you stop him on seven or nine? Or it's two. just, it's just that eight. They always get to eight and then go, nah. He was up. He was up. The rules are, I get on your feet before ten. He was on his feet before ten. Yeah, he, had, he actually had two seconds to stand there and relax for a couple of seconds. So, yeah. take take the eight, or if you, it's a mandatory. It's such, eight. it's such a, a hard mandatory eight, but yeah. It's one of them hard yeah. ones. That we'll never be happy, will we? What the fuck do I know? I'm a ref, am I? No. <laughs> we'll never be happy. You get guys that go on, the fight goes on way too long. You can see the geezer's fucking fucked. And then you get ones where you're like, Jesus, he's fine. Yeah, you you'd, ra- you'd rather one too few than one too many. But I think, generally speaking, they can kind of preach a little bit of... It seems stupid to like argue against safety first. Yeah, boxing. yeah. But like, yeah, I think I would have liked to have seen that maybe go a little longer. But potentially, yeah. it was only ending one way. Yeah, I'm not even talking about that fight in general. Yeah, no, no, that, 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 more that's general what, that prompted prompt me to think of this. Yeah, point yeah, that sure. Happens a lot where, like I say, in in America, they can be like nine, and the fight jump up. Yeah. Oh, he's up before ten. Yeah. If the ref says nine and you're on the deck in England, you're out. You're out. Like you ain't. Don't matter if you take your eight and you know you stand up on nine, you're out. He's clearly okay. You stood up on nine and you count him out. Yeah. But in, in America, you get that ten seconds. Dubois, and who's, who's your next? If you're if you're the, the matchmaker, who are you putting Dubois in with next? Um, to, for like a learning fight, I don't know. It's got, it's got to be learning fights. Now. Like obviously, it, look, everyone's got this Joyce thing, haven't they? Let's, I was gonna say, let's get that out of the way because I took a lot of shit for it, and this is potentially me airing my opinion where some people would prefer I didn't. But I don't see that fight happening. I didn't see that fight happening then. The board circular didn't really make me see it happen. I mean, I did. All the articles on no, all the no, websites. No, I, I addressed it a little bit, kind of tongue in cheek on Twitter um, when it when it was kind of done. It was a done deal. <laughs> but obviously, this is kind of on my on my week off. But like, nor should the fight happen. I got a lot of shit for this with people kind of like, oh, you're acting like a promoter. We should want to see the fight now. Yeah, I understand that. But like, if you're Dubois. You need like what? Why would you risk Dubois against somebody like Joyce, who's a lot more experienced? Whether you think he could beat him or not, like why do that when Joyce and particularly Joyce? I mean, Joyce said in his interviews all week. So this is after like everyone went, oh, the fight's happening. The next day they had the press conference, and Joyce was like, well, I think his words literally were, the Dubois fight for the British title will be a step back from him. That doesn't really fill anyone with confidence. No. Sam Jones, we don't really know, but he's not short of a word or two. He's mentioned nothing about Dubois Joyce across his social media. It would just seem quite silly for that fight to happen. I mean, particularly now, like, 
Joyce signing with Frank, some people say, oh, that makes that fight easier. But like, if you're Frank, you've got two it's fighters. It's someone that, to protect. Yeah, and, and like, again, like, not making excuses for promoters who do that. But you have to, burying your head in the sand and completely ignoring the obvious business side of the sport doesn't really do anybody any favours. It's so prevalent. Like, it's, it's so prevalent. obvious, like, that that fight's not going to happen in July. In my, in my opinion, I'd love to be proved wrong. I think it's a... Hey man, I'd love to see that fight. It'd be exciting. I wouldn't really know which way to lean, but there's a reason why it would be such a great fight if it happens because it's so unlikely. Like that's what I think people are kind of skating around. But to answer your original question with Dubois, like somebody around that sort of level, that Larty level, who's going to be game and it's another one of them. Yeah, someone of like who's who's. Hard. Would you do that for another six months, another year? Potentially, yeah. He, he's how old's Dubois? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. He's so young. <laughs> Have have anyway. 19 years he's <laughs> so <laughs> young and like mental isn't it? And, he, and your last night kind of showed that he does he could, wait, he could literally on. wait Joyce out for retirement <laughs> yeah. he could is 33 if you're so Joyce he, why are you stepping he, back to fight a 21 year old he guy? could it very much sense. just wait it out till Joyce retires he's but so young Joyce isn't someone for him to fear I think he's a I think both fighters would take the fight what about Gorman? feel like they would win what about Gorman I'm, do you I'm, like him and Gorman more than you like him and Joyce I think as a fight I probably would rather see Joyce versus Dubois, but I think Dubois versus Gorman. I mean, BT haven't spent an X amount of time and money and effort trying to build them two together for a fight for the last year, eighteen months, and just to let that die. That's a more logical fight because they're both kind of at the same stage of their careers. Joyce is thirty-three; is on the verge of world title shots. Yeah. Like, if he loses to Dubois, forget this kind of fantasy land that some people live in. It's like, well, you know, if he loses and he fights against, he gives the fans what they want to see, then no one will mind. Bullshit. They will. Yeah. Like, Floyd Mayweather and like, that kind of era of boxing, and nowadays it's so much on the O. If you go back and you lose yeah. to a guy who's 10 and O, and you're 33, where the fuck does... Where do you go from there? Yeah. Like, you know... Joyce doesn't have time don't to rebuild. Care as much the promoters don't care. Yeah, but it's it, just it's just the way it is. It's not great. I'm not, as a boxing fan, I don't like it, but it doesn't mean because I don't like it, I completely ignore that yeah. side of the business. For me, if I, if I was sense. Dubois, I'd take the fight because he's 21 and it, it's kind it's of irrelevant to him. Yeah. It's different for him. If he loses to Joyce, okay, I'm 21 and you know I can rebuild. But then if you're Frank and BT, why are you going to spend this time building him and Gorman to then throw him to Joyce? If he loses that fight, all right, he can still fight Gorman, but two young Less fighters at the un, unbeaten stage mm -hmm. of their career, that's a, that's a good fight. And yeah. I, think, I think stylistically... That's an intriguing fight, whereas Dubois versus Joyce... is fun. It's fun, yeah. yeah. Those guys are going to come out and they're going to throw shots, whereas I think Dubois the versus Gorman is a good... Yeah, exactly. Bent arm shots. Yeah, and... which would be great, yeah. which would be brilliant. But, like, Dubois versus Gorman, stylistically, is a very good fight. I think, as much as it's like, oh, I don't see that fight happening, I think whatever way those three go about it, it should only end well for the fans. I think, like, you will see fun fights if any two of those three get put together in the next six months or 12 months. I think all of those fights will be competitive and fun, but just when and how they're going to do yeah. it, in, it doesn't, no, I'm I just agree. not sure. I, there's, there's no big rush. There isn't. No, and, I, and, and yeah, don't get me wrong. As I say, boxing fan in me would love to see that fight or any of those one, two fight each other. One thing so. I will say, now that Daniel Dubois is the WBO global heavyweight champion. Well, now he's got something to bring to the table. But I think he's probably... And Joshua's not global champion. Is what he? the fuck is wrong with these belts, man? There's a question on that later. Oh. It, I, it was the nicest looking out of all of them. But have you, fair, have you seen nice. the WBO European one? that yeah. looks like a, It looks like a wet tea bag. It, it folds. It, <laughs> it, folds. it folds. It folds at the side. It looks like a wet tea bag that someone's just thrown it's on so the side. Like those belts in general. I, well, I interviewed Herm like a month ago or six weeks ago. And Herm basically kind of said... Um, well, you know, it's basically promoter's faults, and we, we speak to sexual bodies and you go, well, what about him? And he's this, and, you know, can we get this title? And blah, blah, blah. while that shit's happening, the WBA are fucking... Regular, like, interim, they super. They four champions at Cruiserweight. <laughs> four in the fucking WBA. It's mental. They have, like, a champion in recess, a regular champion, an interim champion. Usyk's now moved up, so he's probably, like, a champion Emirates, emirated. Yeah. It's fucking mad. Then they have, like, a super champion. All of those titles don't mean anything, and all it does is it leads fighters to... Unduly as well, like it doesn't do. I'm going to use his name as an example. Conor Ben any favors to be number six with the WBA? What are you going to fight Keith Thurman soon? Like it's just it's not really likely. So I don't think like having that extra pressure really necessarily helps a fighter. It looks great on paper, yeah. But having these WBO globals or WBA super duper titles, I just think dilutes the sport even further. I mean, most people you speak to want one champion in each division. 
Yeah. Now you've not got only one champion division. You've got four sanctioning bodies. Um, With and a then, fifth trying to get their way in. Yeah. No. Uh, I was going to say something horrible there, but sorry, IBO, you're not in this equation. But then underneath all of that, you've got all of these crazy titles. Like, what do these titles mean? They're just... Nonsense. You're telling me you don't like that there's 25 world champions? No. In the same weight division? I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, just, I just think it's very silly. But you've got, like, the WBA, you've got the WBO Global. Isn't there like a WBA... Just say a word. Like a just say a word. It yeah, doesn't so matter. Just, make it up. just say a word. It really doesn't matter anymore. Like, but it, it does. It do dilutes you think, the sport do you massively. Think, is anyone currently holding every single title in the division? What, what? With, with every version of it? No, but can they think, do that? I don't know, but you think that, no, you can't be. You can't be the can regular. You be the, can you be the blue, gold, silver, <laughs> no. diamond, regular you can be like super champion? Undisputed within a governing body. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I've got all four belts in the same. Well, the, the WBA was supposed to be. This is like eighteen you can be months super ago. Supposed to be yeah. doing like a can thing you be super where... undisputed then? Yeah, super I'm undisputed. Super undisputed. That means I'm undisputed. Yeah. In do you remember they were going to get rid of their regulars at WBA, and then the title become vacant, and they put someone in for it? Quendo and people like that who are like waiting for their shots at the WBA regular. It doesn't make any sense. Like. But at the end of the day, if a promoter is offering you X to put the fight on for this belt, which is going to move them up in the rankings, there's, where's the incentive for the promoter, uh, not the promoter, the governing body to go, actually, mate, no, nah, I don't want that. You don't want your money. Yeah, yeah, like, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're not nah. gonna, Boxing is hardly the most fucking straight down the middle sport in yeah. the world, is it? So um, they're not exactly going to go, actually, mate, do you know what? Keep your money. Yeah. Have oh, the ranking we, on me. We want to show in some integrity. We don't need uh, money. Oh, wait, how much? Is what all right, is, all right, like, go on then. Was it called Global? Whatever belt you want, mate. Just send your, what, what send your checks in the P.O. box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what were we talking about? Yeah, Dubois, um, Dubois, yeah, Dubois. I think. Yeah, but yeah, fun fight. I enjoyed that fight. Yeah. Yeah. That went well off track. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what's fun, isn't it? You just fucking talk bollocks. <laughs> Let's get back, because I want to talk about the Bumblebee himself. The Bumblebee himself. I, Sonny Edwards first. Let's work our way down. Well, we worked. We started at the top, you can't. Yeah, so Sonny Edwards is the... Chief I, chief. I'm not having that. What? How can Sonny Edwards, yeah. who was boxing for what title? W- WBO, WBO European and Intercontinental I okay think, yeah. over a Commonwealth yeah am I wrong but I mean Sonny's boxed on BT and Box Nation recently Lerone hasn't boxed at all in over a year yeah that's fair Sonny's certainly that more well fair. known to people than Lerone Richards at this point in his career um, I think I'd imagine they've got pretty good plans to move Sonny along quickly I mean those weight classes are very yeah. thin um, and he's a talent he really is a talent he can fight I said on the last podcast we, pulled out, we were talking about people in boxing that they're just annoying mm. But there's some that do it in a good way. Mm. For me, he's one. He's like a. He's quite chirpy. He, he says some shit, but I think he backs it. Yeah, well, and he, there's yeah, something about him I really like. So I messaged him after the weigh-in on Friday, and I fucking knew what he would say. I messaged him like, "Good luck tomorrow, mate." Blah blah blah. You know, I'm not. I'll be watching and supporting. And he messaged back like, "Didn't fancy the trip, no." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I knew that was coming." Um, but yeah, he's he's certainly not short of a word or two or. Um, yeah, but that's a, that's part of it, man. That's I like that. Yeah, it's brilliant. He there sells himself really well. It's it comes down to personalities. Really well. like some, I can see why he's annoying. Do you know what I mean? Like I can see if you know Paddy Barnes before he got fucking yeah. embarrassed again. <laughs> but I can see why Paddy would be looking at him like he was quite. He looked down on him a bit, but yeah, he did. Sonny yeah. has that for me the perfect little bit of annoyance, but he backs up with his talent. And yeah, I mean as long as you can back it up, it's boxing. At the end of the yeah. day, if you can if you can talk shit. Talk, the more the more shit you talk, the better. As long as you can back it as long up, as you can get away with it. But yeah. I thought he was great last night. His first fight back off an injury. Yep. Um, he obviously done his ankle, uh, done his ankle ligaments in his last fight. He got put over. I thought he was very good. For the only thing that I do worry a little bit about with Sonny, um, or certainly not worry, but kind of think about, is now those weight classes. You look at your rung size, and a new age moved up, but they're punching harder now around those mm. kind of weight classes. He's not. A... He's not a big puncher, and it's not necessarily a problem because Charlie's not the biggest of punchers. Um, but he moves. His, he moves a lot more than Sonny. Sonny will stay in the pocket more and trade, which is great. And last night it was really exciting to watch yeah. him kind of stay in the pocket, ride shots, and look for little openings, which is great. But I feel like potentially when you move up the levels, I could be wrong when you move up the levels you might need a little bit more punch power if you're going to be spending so much time in the pocket but having said that he can also box on the outside I think he was a really well rounded fighter Um, I thought he was very very good agreed I thought he was very good I like him for for a baby weight or a small little people it was fun it was fun let's talk about Lerone now (laughs) there we go I've been been, for blocking that (laughs) I've been been building up to Lerone for I'm going to say 18 months that I've been beating the drum for Lerone Richards right because for me, he's one of the most talented fighters I've watched live. I remember seeing him on an MTK show, and he was against a journeyman. 
and I've watched a billion of these fights and I don't know what it was but something stood out to me like I, I couldn't put my finger on it you know you know when you just see something you go he's for me and I, I, I can tell and then when you get to know him as a, as a man literally the nicest person in the world is from a good family his dad's a lovely man everyone I don't think I've ever heard anyone say one bad word mm. about their own so you want to see people that do well but the boy's a nine time national champion he's as skillful and as slick as you'll see in this country and I was just fucking glad to see him get his shot mm. he hasn't boxed in a long time right? no it was, it was, uh, he had an injury that no one knew yeah. about um, and before that he's had contractual issues before he was away. so he's had, he's had it's not been easy it's not been as clean and fucking easy as it might for other people he's not well known you know it's only a lot of people inside boxing that really know about Lerone Richards I guess um, and then last night he did what I predicted he would do he didn't get the stoppage which you know yeah, you, you and I we, spoke. we were talking about it yeah, yeah. beforehand I, I didn't see the rush for it maybe sometimes it comes down to bias because I'm, I'm pretty sure I probably said on here before I want to see a fighter go for the finish. Mm. I probably said that. With Lerone, the way I... He sat back a few times, didn't he? He did. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think he's guilty of admiring his work a little bit. I don't know if he's admiring. Fight. I just think he's not, he's not a... Spiteful enough? What's, what's, what's the best way to put it? Yeah, it's not, not aggressive. I don't know what the right way, word to put it is. He's just too cautious. He's cautious. I think he's Definitely. done... He did really good work. Hit him a three or four shot combination. All claim. Stunned him, I think, with the last yeah, shot. And then seemed to sit back and think, okay, what's my next attack? As yeah. if... Whereas a lot, he's a thinking he's fighter. Not, he's not, he's not Which reckless. Which is nothing, nothing wrong with that, obviously. But I think like he'll I get mean, stoppages anyway because he's so good. But yeah, and he'll find the openings. And I think this is what we spoke about before the fight, where he's fighting somebody in Tommy Langford who's kind of been around. He's going to come to win, so those opportunities to get the stoppage will present themselves, which they did in yeah. the second half of the fight. Tommy Langford know he's losing the fight. He so was he's in control of, enough for me. He was in control enough by that point to why not take the risk and have a little go in that ninth round when he started landing those, that uppercut backhand uppercut backhand like if you just sustain that or keep that going into the 10th yeah. round I think he probably some gets him out of there me. yeah Tommy yeah. Langford uh, yeah I mean he was never really in the fight well. yeah. yeah despite Lerone's not got a lot of knockouts he can punch yeah. basic well placed shots as well it's yeah, I think it's it's Tommy, Langford, it's Tommy Langford's it's leaning in yeah. a lot and he's getting clipped but I mean we spoke about this on the car on the way here like when you've got that kind of platform and you haven't boxed and you don't have your name out there as Lerone Richards doesn't you just think like okay the pain all you're in control of the fight now the people who are watching at home want to see the knockout that's what people want to see so potentially could have gone through the gears but I mean I gave Langford a share of the first round as I think some people did yes yeah, so you would have had it 120-109 I mean I, I thought he completely dominated the fight I, I, I said to you when it's someone I care someone about 116-113 or yeah, something yeah, I, I tried to be more harsh on people that I have a relationship with I gave two to Langford yeah, and I, 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 I don't know where that scorecard came from that 116-113 I think I even really remember like the, the um, right hand that Tommy Langford caught him with he caught him with a good right hand but that was really it yeah. across 12 rounds yeah. and yeah, I thought Richards boxed well. Uh, Chris Lloyd, uh, shout out Chris Lloyd. He made a a good comment on Twitter about Lorraine Richards kind of always boxing like he's got time and finding finding time to work, which is obviously great. But also on the flip side, you're not in there against Gennady Golovkin hunting you down or something mm. like you know. Tommy Langford, without being disrespectful, was there to be taken out last night. I think if he'd have gone through the gears, he would have got him out of there. The British is all up in the air. We spoke. I, yeah. was, Callum Smith was the last British super middleweight That's champion, crazy, to, to my man. memory. Maybe I can't think of anyone else. And he's now gone on to do what he did, accidentally beat George Groves. <laughs> uh, but he's ring magazine champion, for what it's worth, because yeah. I don't know how you get it by winning one world title fight, but that's a different conversation. The British title is vacant. It's got to be, right? So, what do you reckon, Lerone? Who would who'd you put him with Lerone for the British and Commonwealth? I don't really know. Like every, everyone at, at super middleweight seems to be above that yeah. now. Like John Ryder is now boxing against. Or is that is that off now? Off the Lemieux. Yeah, he's not, David you know, Lemieux. Lemieux's not. Um, he couldn't fight, so that's 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 not happening. But and he's down at middle again. It's, it's just I don't know who there is at super middleweight to stop Lerone becoming a dominant dominant champion in domestically. No, I don't know who there is. You got like your. Well, you think Ryder's beyond. beyond I think mean, Ryder, yeah, Ryder is. Ryder, uh, Ryder stopped yeah. Patrick Nelson. Um, and he's a kind of a decent. It, well, a lot of people thought they potentially won the fight. With Buster Is he at middle or super now? Super middle. He's still so Lemieux is moving up. Okay. Because okay. Lemieux's like, well, he's been like dead at the weight for years at middleweight. Yeah. He's still. I just don't know who there is in Britain to, to stop no, the Ryan Richards. Quite strange actually when you when you put it like that because it's conventionally been one of our strongest divisions domestically. 
for like a number of years. But having said that, a lot of those guys who were strong have always been above They're that strong domestic level, level yeah. anyway. But um, yeah, interesting. I think there's some good fights out there for him if he. There's people him. that would fight him, as in Umar Sadiq got another stop at, stoppage last night. Uh, Zach Chelly, who beat Umar yeah. earlier in the year, he he got. It's weird to see a seven area title fight on telly. Yeah. Like I just find I'm it not weird. against it though. No, no it's it's good, if they're good. competitive oh, yeah, fights, yeah, yeah. do it. Sure, yeah, yeah. What people might see now, they've stopped these masters titles, haven't they? And these um, challenge belts. Yeah. So now the lowest form of belt is the seven area. So now instead of like load of, load of boys chasing up them nothing titles, if you like, now there's a long queue of people trying to fight for the seven area, mm. which is pushing the value of the seven area up. Yeah. Yeah, it could be because you don't because it's more it's more. I, I remember to my memory. Now you're going to get more el- um, eliminators for it and stuff. So by the time people get to that seven area level, they're going to be better level of fighters. Yeah. Whereas before, because there was some people were more occupied, and rather take an easier fight and win a master's title, take an easier fight for, fight for a challenge belt until there's a weaker champion that's seven area. Yeah. Now there's no other option but to fight for the seven area. That's the nearest title to them. They're all going to be chasing eliminators and trying to get it, which they were losing their eliminators if they're not that good. And then you get better fights at Southern Area, therefore yeah. you might start seeing more Southern Area fights on TV now because they're better fights. Yeah. You can't really do like Roman Richards versus Zach Chelly for the British. And well, this this is it. <laughs> that, that's the truth of it. That's yeah, the exact truth. I wouldn't mind seeing it, but it's, it's going to be difficult to match make with Lerone now. It really is. Chelly would take it in a heartbeat. Fight a guy like that? I'm sure Chelly would take it in a heartbeat. He has this aggressive style that people yeah. would want to see. He's such a weirdo. Why you show me a message and you could just ask me when I press pause, you strange. I've been waiting for you to press pause, but I'm not pressing pause. We're gonna keep going. We could do this conversation on here. I wasn't. I wasn't planning on it. Only because I need to let her know, because otherwise, when we finish, I'll be like, oh yeah. The question is, are you dropping me home? You can say it out loud. You know what I mean? I didn't want to interrupt. I I wasn't planning on dropping you home. Okay. Do you need me to? Well, see, see what the wife's doing. Ignoring my messages right now. (laughs) (laughs) Who would you like to see the Roman Reigns fight? I want to see him. I want to see him in a different style. I want to see him someone that would try and walk him down. Someone that is quite aggressive in in your face and mm. just I wouldn't stick him in with one of them. I don't want to stick him in with Chelly and that yet though. He's too beyond that right now. Way beyond. That's a step back for him. I didn't see um, the Chelly fight last night. A lot. Some people saying that he didn't look good. I don't know. I can only go. By it's what hard because it was Jimmy Smith. He boxed. Yeah. He's not exactly. I think Chelly will reach higher heights. Not just because he won a fight, but before it, I think you can know Chelly is gonna be. Probably someone that is the domestic level, yeah. whereas Southern Area could be the ceiling for Smith. That you know, yeah. it's, it's, same as when Yard boxed Chris Hobbs. Oh, yeah. Has Lerone area. still got his European title? WBO European. He's still got his title. Yard. He's still uh, Yard uh, or Lerone. Lerone. Lerone won last night the Commonwealth, the WBO International. European, obviously, he's, he was he's the already WBO European. Yeah, yeah WBO European, one, European uh, probably still had it. Maybe one. he's unifying them all like Yard, WBO International, yeah, European, yeah. Global. I don't know. I remember when he won that a little while ago and he got ranked at a certain ranking that he said himself. He said, he said, here, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't be that awesome. ranking. So this is despite, quite, again, what we were saying earlier. Despite about his ranking, he doesn't want to be fighting people at that level yet because yeah. he knows he's not ready. Yeah, so this is the thing. Right, again, like, is what, what level is he? Yes, he's ranked at that level, but he knows himself. Yeah, put me in the top 10 all you want. I'm not ready to fight these top world top 10 yeah, fighters. Yeah, it's great that fighters actually recognise that. And I, I mean, I mentioned Conor Ben earlier purely as an example, um, mm-hmm. not to say anything uh, against him, but like, if a fighter realizes that, then then something's got to kind of be wrong with the system. If, fight, if a fighter themselves are saying, "Yeah, I don't really fancy that," or like, "I'm not ready for that," then mm-hmm. something really needs to be looked at. Too many meaningless belts, far too many. Yeah, agreed. no fighter's gonna say, "No, nah, I don't want to fight for that belt." No, anymore. exactly. Which is which is the issue. We've like, had this discussion before. Where wouldn't it be nice if a fighter come on and said, "Nah, don't want to fight for your title, but I want to fight the champion." And then he'll go, all right, I'll fight an English champion next, and then the European champion. I fight one of the world champions, but I don't care about the. Belt. I ain't paying your sanctioning fee. George yeah. Groves with the IBO. Oh, I was going to say. The problem is that George Groves beat Eubank and here's your belt, mate. Mm. You're all right, I don't need that. I think the IBO, I think, uh, if you go look through their rankings, I think a high percentage of their titles are vacant. Yeah. And the people who, they'll have like vacant titles with, I think one or, oh, I can't remember whether it's loads of recognisable fighters in the rankings, but the title's vacant or it's the other way around and the title's vacant and the people in the top 10 have just never heard of yeah. them. But um, yeah, it's all very strange. Jack Catchell, I missed him last night as well. So you know, I didn't purposely miss the card. I was actually I spoke to you about some 
trying a new kind of sleep routine with my <laughs> daughter, which is going really, really badly. Is uh, it? Yeah, really badly. So um, I was in trying to get her to sleep for about an hour and 45 minutes. Can't you just like strap her down or something? You're yeah, not allowed to do that these days, mate. Uh, see how old I am. My kids, we could just fucking lock them in the cupboard. <laughs> at some point, they're going to stop crying. But yeah, so I didn't I didn't actually get to see probably the first half of the card. I mentioned Zach Che, but Jack Catchall. Jack Catchall boxed an eight-rounder. Against the journeyman. Like, I don't, I'll be honest, I didn't look at the guy's record. I didn't look at who he is. The guy, you knew. You looked at him and you knew. This was a keep busy fight for Jack Catchall till the Morris Hooker fight happens. Do I, do I want to see that on my television? I've had this argument before. I don't need to see someone you're trying to build against a journeyman. Sure, but he's not. He's past that point now. He's not. He's like we can go on about like titles getting into a place where you're not really, you know, don't necessarily warrant it. I think Jack Catchell deserves to be where he is in the rankings. Mm -hmm. He's a definitely a viable opponent for a world champion. Definitely fit and ready to to box for yeah. a world title. I think he's very talented. I think he's very underrated, Jack Catchell. But that being said. What is he getting out of boxing an eight rounder in the middle of the card? He could be world champion in his next fight or the next couple yeah. of fights. Why is he boxing in the middle of the card somewhere? Give him a ten rounder against a durable guy or like a decent name, like in and around mm -hmm. plenty of fighters between lightweight a, and welterweight. You can make that fight. Get him a seventy thirty. No, it doesn't 30, even necessarily need to be a seventy thirty. You could be an 80, 20, 90, 10. Like be, yeah. you'd, you'd be crazy to put someone in a sixty forty or a fifty fifty when they're fucking mandatory for a world title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty fifty, yeah. But, but like, when you know, go, well, you're boxing an eight rounder against a guy, you're going to be a hundred times out of a hundred. Problem is, what is that you say put him in a ninety ten, people will just judge him for going. Oh, look, he's boxing this course the points. I, mean, I, I, mean, I didn't see the fight last night, but was the guy? Did the guy last night have a ten percent chance of winning? No, I'm, right, guessing no. I'm guessing no. I'm guessing no. Yeah. Eyes. So like, maybe it, not it nine barely, ten, but yeah. It like, barely avert, I, I barely averted my. Pereira boxed someone on their debut in about forty fights in his career, didn't he? Who are Pereira? Chavez used to do it. Chavez, well, that's Chavez, yeah. Yeah. Chavez, Chavez was ninety six and one. It was yeah. When you're fighting every fucking week, you get like a little bit. But every every week he was fighting someone in their debut or third fight. He's like seventy five. You know, deep. honestly, a lot of the uh, it's either Thai or Filipino world. I was champions. just about to say. So Rungvasai before he boxed uh, Chocolatito, I think it was the rematch. Three, he boxed four debutants. Like, keep busy fights, and three of them were making their debut. Yeah, and he's well. And it, it, he's like he was like forty two and two or something. Yeah. Like forty two and three, and WBC world champion. He's fighting <laughs> debut slots. Can you imagine if fucking Deontay Wilder turned around and was like, I'm going to fight these three debut yeah. man, don't worry. Like, it's good, isn't it? But, but you, say, you say that's funny, and then Lemachenko climbs in the ring the other side. Yeah. And his debut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, back to Jack Hatchell, man. I think Jack Hatchell is very, very talented. And I, I would love to see him box for a world title soon, but I'm not massively... It, like, when I missed him in an eight-rounder last night, I wasn't like, oh, fuck. Yeah. You know? But I think that speaks more about how good I think Jack Hatchell is. As opposed to me not wanting to see him fight. Yeah. Um, let's move. On. I always do that. Um, I'm gonna stop doing that. Yeah, people know when you pause it and then. Yeah. The they do now as well. Stop yeah. it up. <laughs> you, thanks for snitching. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, I did it again for fuck's sake Robert can you please talk to us about the World Boxing Super Series please um. <laughs> <laughs> World Boxing Super Series last night yeah um, Regis Progress stopped Kill Relic which I anticipated um, Relic's kind of a strange one man I think he boxed well against the faded I think is fair to say Ricky Burns um, which brought him to a lot of our attention when he was with Hatton um, he's done okay since being champion, I know he had the he beat uh, Rancis for Bartholomew, who also boxed last night. Into he got a draw, right? Yeah, in, 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 I didn't actually watch the fight. It looked like the worst fight ever. If you're looking at punch stats, it looked like a phone number. If you look for <laughs> it, it was like one, three, seven, <laughs> eight, five. I, I think the most punches that was landed in a round by any fighter was eight Fuck. in a twelve rounder. But anyway, back to back to the fight. Yeah, uh, Proge looked good. Um, he can punch. He's in the final now, right? Yeah, so he moves moves through to the final. Um, he can punch. Opposition that he's faced not been the best. Uh, he's done well with what's been in front of him, um, mm -hmm. Relic included. I mean, you can't kind of completely discredit Relic because I mean, he obviously has some kind of world level performances. Didn't he box Burns? Yeah, that's what I mean. So yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he boxed Burns. Um, and and was unlucky. Or was yeah, scores, so that, yeah, that scores. was a very, very close fight. Um, yeah. In some cases, controversial. But yeah, Progre looked good. Uh, caught him with a nasty body shot to kind of. In, I think that was. Uh, in the third round or something caught him with a real nasty body shot and then busted the nose later on Progre looks good man I mean if you listen to what people are saying out of America he's you know supposedly the favourite a lot of other people would say Josh Taylor who yeah. obviously boxes Baron Chicken in a few weeks time but 
did what he had to do. I expected him to stop Relic, and, and that's pretty much what he did. So, yeah, good performance from Progress. And Anito Donaire, who's having like a... Was it what Indian summer is it? He's is the... fucking amazing, man. Like that guy. I love that after him and Frampton, and you see the video they're out for dinner yeah. and the fan. It just it, seems like he's a... honestly the, one of the nicest fellas that I've ever come to. Jim, when he sung to you, he sung. Um, he sung to he you. He sung Ed Sheeran for me <laughs> when I was in Belfast when I was working for Behind the Gloves. Yeah, he he just started singing, and he was like, "I'm not going to stop." I was like, "I want you to fucking stop and carry on singing." And he's, he's just one of those guys. He's like infectious energy. Like Belfast have quite a sizable Filipino contingent like oh, really? community yeah so there was like 70 or 80 people turned up and he took photos with all of them like never left one person behind and stuff just really fucking nice man and he yeah. doesn't know having said that when he dropped down to Bantamweight which is where he's not boxed like, I don't think he boxed at Bantam for like 8 years or something he got as high as I think Super Fever at once yeah. he was, he was going to fight I know he got knocked out by Nicholas Walters at Featherweight obviously big fan weight but when he dropped down to box at bantamweight for this series everyone was kind of like you know fighter dropping down two weight classes end of his career he's been in a lot of tough fights I didn't think it was a good idea looked he got lucky with the Burnett victory obviously yeah I was gonna say he looked in fight week I looked at him and I, the, the other times that I'd seen and interviewed Donaire was when he'd been boxing at featherweight so he's at 126 pounds so he goes into the ring at 128 so he's like just happy go lucky all week he's singing he's doing this before the Burnett fight he was he just looked like a fighter who was fucking trying to make the weight and yeah. it was very different he wasn't his usual complete bubbly self still like nice and stuff but I looked at him and I was thinking like at the time I remember looking at him and thinking god you look fucking terrible but then I just kind of thought well actually the other times that I've seen you you haven't even been thinking about weight yeah. and it's been a while since we've really seen Donaire having to properly make weight which he did, um, but yeah, what you said about the fight, I I actually thought Burnett would eventually get to him and stop him late in that fight. I think mm -hmm. he buzzed him in the second round with a right hand, but obviously then his his the back backs, his back went. But I mean, such fair, a strange thing, injury. Yeah, like, weird mental, one. He just it? overshot the right hand, um, and then he was just fucked. Yeah, There's just no way about it. Yeah, but I mean, Donaire, he was still ferocious for those first few rounds. He didn't look like a, mm -hmm. a fighter who couldn't pull the trigger anymore. He was aggressive came forward and obviously the, the knockout that he got admittedly a late replacement in Stephen Young but as I understand it World Boxing Super Series have fucking replacements on ice yeah. so to speak Postal is a classic example he's, he's a reserve fighter for Callum Smith Super had to box, box that uh, Nicky Nicky Holscomb yeah. yeah was that Bramer fell out wasn't it yeah, yeah. so that was like the night before so they do have them ready but still like no, Stephen Young is, is not Zolani Tete whatever happened with Tete it's a massive shame a lot of people point to the fact that you know as soon as the fight goes on Sky you get a BT fighter and Tete gets pulled off the card how true that is I really don't I fuck, know I, I hope not like, you, would, I, you would hope I not would because hope where the not. fuck is Tete going to go from here now no, exactly like, he, he it keeps his title but pff, like all of the, the money in the tournament is spectacular Mm. so like he's not going to make that money again and, like, is he going to go back to undercard BT shows well, this in Wembley is the or thing. Leicester so or... you would hope that the injury is legitimate and to be fair I don't know anything that points otherwise mm -hmm. but what I do know is Nanito Donaire can still fucking crack with that left hook he touched Stephen Young with that left hook and knocked him out it was like the I whole, seen it oh mate get it out have a I look think, at I think now. I've got it so recorded like, somewhere like the um Remember when he like knocked out Victor Arginio and like, left hook Just uh, and selective. the uh, Montiel fight as well and he's like knocking, knocked him out and Montiel's freaking out on the floor and shaking and stuff it was like classic Donaire man he hit him with that left hook and Young was out and that was it so it shows that he can still pop man yeah. and he's what like 36, 37 like a 5 weight world champion like fucking I mean I don't fancy him against a new way if it is a new way or even Rodriguez that's a great fight that's, but, a, that's on the uh, uh, Taylor, Taylor Barron yeah. that's a fucking great Fuck fight sake, man. I want to go to that that's I've still never been fight. to Glasgow for a fight I've never been Belfast for a fight they're the two that I want to do oh, man. Belfast and Glasgow but yeah I mean that you've done Belfast haven't you well you did an MTK show you haven't done a big show there have you no I can't oh, yeah. oh. So, no <laughs> <laughs> was it was it a big show Rich you would have no, commentated it wasn't busy it wasn't busy it was a European title fight but it wasn't like European title fight or the African one was that <laughs> no it wasn't no 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 that was at your call. that was Larry this Ekendale, was yeah. Com Cummins versus Felique was it Felique WBO European yeah he, he's now boxed he ended up boxing had a rematch didn't he Luke Keeler with Luke Keeler yeah it was Luke Keeler's one that was the same now. night or the night before Alan Brown I think yeah no that was in Liverpool that was March 30th yeah so it blends so, yeah. in together but, um, it does back to World Boxing Super Series Taylor Baranchik's a good fight um, I, I know 
Taylor quite well and I've made no secret of the fact that I'm going to watch it anyway it'd be great <laughs> it'd be great for Taylor to win a world title but you know yeah, I'm there to watch a new way Rodriguez yeah, it's the, uh, for my money is the best fight of the year so far it's a fucking great fight a lot of people are I'm, uh, sleeping I'm on very, I am I'm very ignorant to it I, he can I, fight I, I don't pay that much attention to the, those kind of guys unless mm. there's a reason that I feel like like a new way, for example, mm. everyone's talking about him. You need to, you need to pay attention. So, Rodriguez did a real, real job on Paul Butler. Real job on Paul Butler. And yeah. you know, Paul Butler again. He's a reserve for the tournament. Okay, I do, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. did a real job on Paul Butler. Um, and he can fight, man. His fight with Maloney in the, in the quarterfinals was a really good fight. Maloney. A lot of people were sleeping on him. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the tournament. Like the the concept of it. Now they've got Sky as well behind them. That's huge because. As much as the fights are great, the production is fucking amazing. Oh, it looks brilliant. Best, best show I've ever been yeah, to was brilliant. Manchester. Yeah, and it, it does. It looks fantastic. But what they were lacking, obviously, for the second season was a, was a, a legit platform. I mean, I know mm-hmm. they they had it on Sport Bible and IFL and, and what have you. But now they've got Sky behind it. I mean, that's it could not go any better you've got Taylor versus Baronchik which is a great fight and then you've got a new A versus Rodriguez on Sky I mean it's fallen on the same night as the Billy Joe Saunders show in Stevenage in Stevenage um, which I'm sure uh, Joe Joyce on that card um, not against Daniel Dubois shock but um, probably Larty no, try again <laughs> yeah get Larty back in there yeah get him in. do you know what mate that wouldn't surprise me nah. that wouldn't surprise me um, there is a shitload of questions. I said, um, like we paused it. We haven't paused it. We're just going to go straight through now. There's a lot of questions. Um, a few other things we are going to talk about at some point. <laughs> Let's talk about drugs and. For some like reason, that. your missus has tweeted. <laughs> yeah, what's for dinner? I uh, said, so get the questions in for Rob Tebbett. The missus said, what's for dinner? Are you going to be back in time to cook her dinner? Mate, I haven't been cooking shit for <laughs> at least 18 months, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I used to do all of the cooking in the house and then. I started working in boxing and now all like in the last few days I've had a KFC, a Chinese. Uh, I had a KFC at one o'clock in the morning, man, last night. Oh, no, I respect that. That's big no, in the game. That's, that's horrible. It's just not big in the game. That's big in the game. I respect that. Such a fucking game. And not all of these fucking like cause where I where I am in Bedford. There's no there hasn't been any Uber Eats and now it's starting to happen. So can you still so now, you just now I can life. get like McDonald's and fucking KFC and Burger King and shit and it's it's not good. But um, yeah, on to the real questions rather than what I'm even right, doing. Poachy got a win last night. Poachy got a win. He got a knockout yeah, win. Got a knockout win. I put, on, on his, yeah. put it on his Facebook he got a win, right? And then I put a comment on there saying, uh, give that kid a refund, you're out. Hold <laughs> <laughs> if you know what you're there I, to I do. I love Poochie. <laughs> Lewis Van Pooch, what a guy. He cracks me up. He boxed Lerone, didn't he? He boxed Lerone at... Uh, no, it wasn't, was it, was it was Lerone, it, right? Yeah, it was the MTK, was it? No. He was okay. massive behind him as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did box Lerone. Um, let's rattle through some of these questions. First one is from fucking Lewis Smith. Fuck's sake, Lou. One of many. We'll just go for the first one. After Dubois' win last night, but against someone with limited experience, did, La- did Larty expose some issues with Dubois' defence and have they hyped him too much trying to get him in the same class bracket as Joshua when he may never be at that level? Uh, I'll go first. No, I don't think so. I don't think it necessarily showed defensive flaws in him because he showed at various points of that fight that he can box and he was doing a lot of good things defensively I think what it did show is that he can be taken off the game plan which is only expected when you're 21 years old and yeah. you don't have the experience that he's got that's what it's easy to forget yeah you forget he looks like a 40 year old man yeah he's, <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a kid, a kid. A boy. so like no I don't like well, I ain't gonna that. tell him he's a kid <laughs> he's, got, he's got more learning to do obviously but how do you ever tell at 21 what someone's going to become? You can't, like, all you can do... Well, I think the fact that he's fighting a guy who's, like, top 15... I mean, I know rankings on the be-all yeah. and end-all, but, like, that's a decent level of opponent. I think you can see obvious potential there, but, yeah, I don't think necessarily we saw defensive flaws. Not I think it's more a concentration... Not at the age of 21. Oh. It's... it's He's so young that mm. he, can, he can. So what if he's got something wrong with his defense right now? He's 21. Mm. You can go on till you're 40 as a heavyweight. So effectively, he's got 19 years left. And he's getting great sparring. I mean, like obviously, we've all had the rumors of the various sparring stories. And I mean, he went out to spar Povetkin when Povetkin boxed Joshua. So he's, you know, he's doing the good work in the gym. He's done everything that's been asked of him so far as a pro. He just took a couple of shots. But I mean, last night he took a couple of shots and he showed that he, you know he can take them and he can ultimately come back and stop him. So. It's a good learning fight, but I think it, it was more a concentration and experience thing as opposed to defence, yeah. I think, personally. Right, I think he had a bit of fun. So I think Yeah, he, I don't imagine I think he, he enjoyed it again, it. but... <laughs> yeah. 
The uh, next question from Lou is a good one for you because you've got a rant in you today. I can see it. The question is, do we need more Jamani Camaros in the sport? People who just don't give two fucks and will go up and down in weights to fight and give more than a good account of themselves and make these fights more competitive on the small hall scene. 100%. 100% we should see more Jamani's on the scene. I think Liam Wills could potentially be one of them. I know that Liam would actually fight anyone. Jamani is going through some phase right now where he's fighting absolutely everyone, which is... Yeah, he's just... I don't expect, I don't expect everyone to decide, you know what, I'm going to go up five weight divisions just to fight absolutely anyone. But I would like to see more people have 50-50s. Just, there's too many boys... Gonna, it takes one to other point of boys fucking being deluded. I don't know if you feel the same way, but there are a lot of boys on the small hall scene. They beat five, six, seven journeymen. They think they're fucking Lemeshenko. You've beat absolutely no ones. I've had, I've said this on the podcast before. You can be ten and zero against journeymen. You beat absolutely no one. You've had sparring sessions in front of your mates. That's all you've fucking done. I'd like to see boys do a couple of four rounders. Right, you know what it's like. Do a four rounder. Do a fifty fifty against another contender. If you lose, so what? Move forward. If you win, you've got the talent. If you start losing, you're just not that good. You're just not that fucking good. I lost a journeyman. I obviously just want that good. It's as simple as that. Stop being so fucking deluded. I'm not saying you can lose to a journeyman. That's it. You're not good because obviously, people uh, you, you have off nights. You do. But if you're consistently losing to, well, if you're struggling with journeyman, you ain't good. You're just not good. It's as simple as that. You need to be fighting. You need to be stepping up. There's no point fighting 15 journeymen, 15 four rounders, even six rounders. You're not going to fucking go anywhere. There are boys that are at 20 fights now fighting for European and world title fights. How come you're at 15 fights and you've not even had a 50-50? How has that happened? Have six fights. You now know the pro game. Fight someone else who's had six fights who ain't done a 10 rounder. We'll do an eight rounder against them. None of you have done an eight rounder. Yeah. And all the, I know what the coaches are like. Yeah, but you've got to build, learn your trade. He doesn't know the trade either. You're both learning. Take a chance. If you think you're good, if you think you're a good fighter, take the chance. Is, is it this Why thing are you Rob wasting said? Is it a zero? Is it a zero? It is that people but if you're, believe oh, is believe Yeah, the, the, the O's great. The O's great. But if you think you're going to be a good pro boxer, fight another pro boxer and show that you're a good pro boxer. There's a difference between. There has to be a difference between building a fighter and building a record. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, yes. That's, that's where many, the, the, the line is Too many boys and they're blurred. fucking deluded, mate. Mm. They're fucking deluded. There's loads of boys like they're like you know in their own little minds they're like ah. Oh, just, so I can't even put it into record. words. I don't, it does my fucking head in. The, the so levels of delusion that people The have level of del delusion, I get. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe. Every fighter thinks, you know, you've got a, you've got a level in mind. I think I can achieve this. Right, that's great. That's good. Some boys, you can see after two or three fights, they ain't as good as they think <coughs> they're going to be. They still believe it. That's absolutely great, but... I know you've got a dream big to reach it, but you have to be realistic sometimes. You do have to be realistic. There are boys out there that go, yeah, oh, I think I can win, you know, like a, a European title. Listen, if you sold enough tickets, you can win a European title, but you don't sell tickets <laughs> and you can't win a fight. So, absolutely not. You can't beat 10 journeymen. All right, you can beat 10 journeymen, sell 500 tickets a fight, and then maybe get a European title fight. Obviously, that's very different. But if you actually think you're a good fighter, please stop fighting 10, 15 journeymen and then telling everyone how good you are because you box absolutely no one. Absolutely fucking no one. That does wind me up a lot. I think there should be some sort of criteria where... Because obviously anyone can turn pro. I'm not against that because some people turn pro and they're absolutely fucking phenomenal. Even people that had terrible amateur records can turn over. Johnny Nelson had a terrible amateur record, I think. Turn over and... Turn the game over, do you know what I mean? That That's not impossible, but at some point you need to go, right, look, I'm fucking 10 0 against absolute nobodies. Please give me a fucking opponent. Yeah. Take a, Even take a, a silly fight that you're well against it and lose, but lose with what, fucking dignity because you. Well, you learn more from one loss in those fights than you will learn from bowling over another 10 I get, I get, I get an old yeah. matters, but if you're fighting, if you're. Like I say, there's a lot of deluded fighters. A lot of the boys that are 10-0 and 0 and under ain't that fucking good. They ain't that fucking good. So if you are good, or you think you're good, you should be able to beat these fighters. You should be able to beat them. If you're not beating these fighters, sorry, you just ain't got it. You just ain't got it. I get that no coach is going to turn around and say, look, mate, you just ain't got it if they're making them a bit of money and they're keeping the gym warm and keeping an atmosphere. They're good for sparring and all that. Managers, again, they're making money. They're selling tickets, you know. You're putting bums on seats. You're bringing people, creating an atmosphere. No one's really in a position to tell people, look, mate, you just ain't got it. But if the board would turn around and say, listen, no, you've boxed five journeymen now and you fight some positive record. Yeah. They're not going to lose anything out of that then. Yeah. This... <laughs> The re the, it's, the, it's just the way boxing is. I know it's just the way boxing is, but it still fucking infuriates me. Fair enough.
Like I've said it before, a 10 and 0 record as a professional is hell a lot easier to get than 10 and 0 as an amateur. Yeah, for sure. Because as an amateur, you have to fight. Yeah, you team. box whoever you fucking told. This to is the fucking thing, and you get these unlicensed fighters or white collar, or whatever. All these different things. So the easiest place to be undefeated is professional. That's the easiest place to be undefeated. Secondly, it would probably be the unlicensed because set enough tickets, you can get a few easy fights. But eventually, people will suss it out and think, Do you know what? Don't actually fancy that. Mm. In professional boxing, there are people set up to take losses. Yeah, In the amateur the boxing, job. there ain't no journeyman. So amateur boxing effectively is the what hardest. Did, what did journeyman do as amateurs? They were probably active am active fighters winning. Yeah, um, win some, lose some. Isn't is it Jordan? Granham. Granham. He was, a, he, was a, he was a national champion. National champion. That he was he's national on the road. champion. Turned pro. Just goes on the road. No one's like two and twenty four no, or something. No like one's going to hurt him. No one's going to hurt him. Makes a good living out of it. Probably makes a few grand a fight. No one's going to hurt him. But boxing is just the way boxing always is but I would like to see more there was there is undefeated boxing amateurs how about this there is boys that get to like 45 fights and 140 if the same rules applied in the professional that it did in the amateur where everyone just boxed everyone there would still be boys with brilliant records but you'd have the better boys with good records rather than manipulated records yeah. there are boys out there that have had 20 fights lost 7 but he is better than another boy that's had 20 and 120 He's just not got that record because he's boxed a lot more harder fights. He might have boxed two journeymen, three journeymen, can't sell tickets, took 50-50s all the way, beat loads of them, lost to a few of them. You know, Chellarendo, I don't think he's got... He's got a load of losses. Yeah. But he's boxed so many fucking 50-50s, but he's beat a hell of a lot more names. Someone yeah. will look at him and go, oh, what, 25 and lost seven? He's boxing a guy who's fucking 25 and lost one. <laughs> he's boxed 15 contenders. Mm, yeah. That is a hell of a lot better. But I think it's all to do with image and people... But, Joe Average or whatever you want to call him will look and go, oh, he's got seven losses. Yeah. That's all people will look at. The Americans so. did it with Pucci and they did a big thing about it for his 100th fight and the Americans were mocking him. Oh, he's lost 90 fights out of 100. How can this match? They don't understand. Like, it's just you think that's on different. purpose? Do you think yeah. that's on purpose? Like, this is, comes to my point. If you're good, like you think you are, like most boxers deludedly think they're better than they are, then you'll beat other contenders. If you're not confident you're going to beat other boxers, you shouldn't be a boxer. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, I, someone can happily turn around and say, Rich, you didn't fucking fight anyone. Yeah, I would wanted to. I asked for fucking contenders after my second and third fight. I was asking all the fucking time for them. Didn't get them, then got beat, lost by to a fucking journey anyway. Yes, I probably could have come back from that. Obviously, injury stopped me. But maybe that just showed where I would have got anyway. Maybe I wouldn't have fucking got anywhere else. Yeah. As much as you love boxing, and you think you're great, and your family and friends think you're the bollocks because you're a pro boxer, if you lose multiple times at that level, you found your level, mate. Fair enough. Well said. Good rant. Well done. Liked it. Uh, it sounds harsh because I know. It's that, still going. Like, <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> Let it go. It sounds harsh because I know. I know. But everyone puts their puts their heart and soul into it. They, yeah. they do. I get but that. But it doesn't mean they have the ability. But it doesn't mean you've got it. And you. It just really doesn't mean you've got it. As much as you want to have it, don't mean you have. <coughs> Will Michael eighty three man like Will two and, questions. <laughs> two questions. First one of the two front runners for AJ. Who would you most prefer to see, Ruiz or Hunter, and why? Hunter, definitely. Because um, he's not as sore on the eyes as Ruiz. No, it's not like, I, I, get, like, when, I don't want to see him fight a retired lightweight. No. <laughs> <laughs> no one got that. I put it on Twitter the other day. I don't think anyone got it. No, got it. Well, we got it. We just yeah. didn't fight it. For <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, Hunter, for sure. I had this conversation with someone um well, well, I, well i did an interview with him he was kind of going through the things and what you said about ruiz is actually true that that affects marketability it does. Man. like you're putting somebody who looks like andy ruiz on the scale i flicked through the if Dimitrenko people thought fight. gerald miller looked yeah. bad on the scales yeah. andy ruiz can fight by the way yeah, he's he a good fighter good amateur but he fight overflows around. over his shorts like i do but yeah he's he doesn't look fantastic when he puts his guard scales. you see the roles that like, it's what happens to us chubsters and he lost like a close fight against joseph parker in new zealand which you know arguably yeah. could have gone either way I thought Parker won the fight at the time and I had money on Ruiz to win the fight so that's always a good indicator of how close <laughs> you think it is but so when Hunter came over for the announcement of the Bacoli fight and then when he came back for fight week and then obviously the fight he subsequently had you get around some people who have Josh Taylor's like this and you guys will know it you would have seen it and you can kind of you can't really put your finger on it but some guys just love to fight just love to fucking have a fight Michael Hunter is one of those guys he just very relaxed. He's not, but he. You can tell that it's kind of bred in him. I mean, he has a great amateur background. He's boxed pretty much everyone on the American scene as a heavyweight, as an amateur. He's been around Vegas, all of the good sparring. Like, he's been around, man. He's a seasoned guy. He boxed Usyk, and 
the, the fight, he came out and he let his hands go in that fight. And Usyk took over the middle rounds and really beat the shit out of him He's in the Usyk. last round. Exactly, that's that's Usyk. But Michael Hunter is game, really game. And I feel like, not that, to say Ruiz isn't, but having been around Hunter and really got that vibe from him, he's got Hassim Rackman, who's like his manager. Yeah. Now, Hassim Rackman is a fucking scary dude, man. And like, if you've got that, then I want to see you in the fight. Because I know that he would go into that fight against Anthony Joshua, believe in 100%, not to say Ruiz doesn't, but I believe in 100% yeah. that he would win and he would either get knocked the fuck out or, you know... Be doing the Yeah, there. exactly. That's the thing. He is game. Like, he took some shots against Bacoli. I know it's, it's kind of cool for people to kind of slate Bacoli and Billy Nelson. For that. Like, but exactly, Bacoli can fight and he's a, he's a big, He's strong, a Polish heavyweight champion. You put some respect on him. <laughs> well, exactly. But look, again, he goes <laughs> and he knocks out uh, Marius back afterwards. Yeah. That's, that's a decent win on, you know, on em enemy, enemy ground. But... Hunter is game, man, and I just feel like, stylistically, Ruiz, who's like an outside fighter, who doesn't move his head, he's not got fast, he's got fast hands, but he doesn't have fast feet, and I think he's just going to be there perfect for Joshua, Joshua's just going to line him up with them straight One, shots. Two, for bam. market reasons, that doesn't make sense because of the way he looks. Well, this is the thing. Because everyone's not going to know these fighters, you're picking between two fighters that not everyone's going to know of. Yeah. One looks like that, one looks like that. But I mean, Hunter I know I talk about the market inside more than I do the fighters all the time, but unfortunately, with a lot of these kind of fights... Yeah. Yeah. Hunter certainly has more of a profile this what they look. over here than than certainly Ruiz does. Yeah, he's definitely. an American as well. He, he also boxed, is yeah. with Matchroom. So like he's uh, this goes back to come what we were talking about earlier with like Frank having Dubois, Joyce, and Gorman doesn't automatically mean that these are these are easier fights to make because you're all under one umbrella. Because yeah. Hunter's under the Matchroom umbrella. And I spoke to Hunter. I spoke to his manager last week and they were saying like look we're just planning for the future we've got three fights so they've obviously signed with like a plan in place yeah. to box these three fights Miller's failed the tests and they've probably had a very informal conversation about stepping in but they've decided to stick to the route but I mean so you yeah. don't think it will be Hunter? No it, well, I, it's Ruiz is it? It's Ruiz it? yeah it's, it's, the, it's Ruiz okay um, but yeah I, I would prefer it to be Hunter I said this to her during the interview that I did with him so it's no secret um yeah, I, I would certainly prefer it to be Hunter. And I think that he would give a good enough account of himself that even if he got stopped after seven or eight rounds, he could come again. Okay. Question two from Will Michael. Is talk of Khan retiring unnecessary and unfair given the way that he was fighting a pound for pound great? <laughs> would you like to see him carry on and perhaps fight a Broner or a similar level fighter? I don't think Amir Khan needs to carry on. Do you know what? And I know Will's a massive Amir Khan fan. I've always been on the fence with Amir because no one can... Take, no one can doubt his resume and his CV. No, no one else has that. No, in, in no one has that. No. I, I don't give a fuck. He is a bit of a knob. Irrelevant. His boxing career. My personal opinion. My personal opinion on that fight is he realised he was done. Mm. Whether you know, I'm not saying he quit. I'm not saying he quit. He's an intelligent man. Who he's not intelligent. He's a bit of an idiot. He said in one interview, I, I didn't know I had five minutes. And then just before that, yeah, I just, just said the, the ref, ref told me. Him. So yeah, he's not the most intelligent, but he knows boxing. He knew he had five minutes and I think he wanted a way out. And I think if that's in the back of his mind somewhere, it may be time to switch. So you say to, you didn't think things. he quit. Now, I say, I'd, this is like the end of... I think he did. Yeah. He did. But you, you said, he but did, yeah. Which stopped short of using the word. I, actually, I tweeted at like six in the morning that Amir Khan quit and got a few... You know, a few people said oh, I was. You know what I was talking about? Like, you get the usual stuff. Like, well, if it was you in there, you'd have quit. Well, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think Terence Crawford would have probably stopped me. <laughs> you know, I've never boxed before, so yeah. Um, I doubt I'd have got through the first minute. Yeah, well, like, no, Carl almost didn't. But like, you go back and like people have kind of highlighted the back, the Maidana fight, and you know, even Garcia and Prescott. Like, but, like, he got nailed by Prescott. He's still trying to get up, so I'm not doubting the career that he had. But that's a long time ago. And it also, the Crawford fight was a different type of quit, so to speak. He was, was getting... It's the first time, it, style. it was the first time in Amir Khan's career he's been thoroughly outboxed from the start of the fight until yeah, the end of the fight. Yeah, he usually beats the fuck out of people. Just gets caught. Yeah, it's a different kind of... Like his, I think people are confusing like his fight or flight. He's very much a fight. So if he gets buzzed, he'll throw back and he won't When, when he shouldn't. Yeah, yes. when he shouldn't. He's got that little dog in him, which is what's made him one of the most exciting fighters to watch for a number of years. But in a fight where you've been hurt, you've lost every second of that fight. I know he was saying that he felt like Crawford was slowing down, but I don't think anybody who <laughs> with a reasonable mind watching that fight could agree with that. Nope. He got hit with a shot and I think, no, you know, whatever you think of the shot, 
that hit him like it was a low shot whether mm -hmm. you think it was enough to to incapacitate him he didn't take the five minutes and it just looked odd like it just looked very very strange how he was pulled out of the fight i felt like he quit and that's not me saying that in a derogatory way because that's what he did. You can dress it up. Like you have people who say, "Oh no, he didn't quit. He was just saving himself for another day." It's, it's, the, same thing, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Oh, I understand the negative connotations that the word "quit" brings to a fighter, and far from me to you know, he's got in the ring with one of the best pound for pound fighters again. in the world. Yeah, again, exactly. Great point. But it still doesn't change the way that fight ended. That fight ended with Khan knowing, in my opinion, knowing that able he couldn't to, win the standing fight. fight, but yeah, not to. yeah, and like. He got hit low, but I it mean, was how a really fires, bizarre finish. How many fighters you see get hit low or finish a fight with fucking one arm? Or they, I, do you know what was on the other day? Hey, Ben, you won. Fuck me. Like, Man's leg was hanging. Yeah, so, I mean, but again, it doesn't diminish. I think you make a great point. It doesn't diminish what, what Carl no, has I, achieved. I, I think he should walk away with his head held high. He doesn't need the his money career, anymore. No, of course just, he doesn't. I don't, I don't want to see Carl broke. I was away for the weekend and um, I brought my Amazon Fire Stick. Shout out Adrian Hughes. Because it was a pay-per-view, wasn't it? <laughs> Are you admit admitting to illegally? You're absolutely goddamn oh, right. Terrible. Shout out Adrian Hughes. DM him for all your streaming needs. Um, but I was up there, me and my power watching it. Quarter to six in the morning. We'd fucking stayed up. And I, I was honestly like, did that just end? Yeah. Am I really tired? What, uh, what's happened here? Because he's just gone... No, I can't. I kind of can't do it, and that that'll do. It was just very odd. It, it was, was just very strange. And then Virgil Hunter kind of said after the fight that it was like Man City scored the wankers. Uh, yeah, one nil. But Hunter came out afterwards. You know, you know, it was the best thing to do for his fighter, which kind of implies that you know he. Yeah, he. Knew. Fight, and Virgil Hunter was no fool. No. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I I don't I wouldn't like to see Khan carry on. And as that said, as somebody who's been a big fan of Khan throughout his career. Um, Coogan kind of mentioned to me that it's probably the last interview that you'll ever get with Khan for saying that. I would d disagree purely because I don't really get any interviews with him anyway. <laughs> so that's fine. But um, yeah, the whole Khan Brook thing, I mean, I, d I don't want to see that now. It would be such a, a lesser fight than what it could have been, should have been, would have been. I just think them doing it now is just a cash grab and there's they nothing fight else the to title. it. It's a good point. <laughs> a good point. <laughs> uh, quick one, Rob Cass. Oh, I love Rob Cass. Turned up to our live show tattoo shop. Came two hour drive each way. He's yeah. got like a new clothing thing, like right? A ring, ring walk Friday theme. Yeah, Friday. That's cool, just man. he's just spreading positive vibes. I think that's what he does. He's a, he's a good, good man. Um, his quick one, uh, Daniel Dubois. While we're on it, Dubois Joyce. If it happened tomorrow, who would you back? Um, that's tough. I think. Rich, I'll let you go first on that one. Joyce through maturity. Yeah, I think you can make a case. But I think in a couple of years it will change. I would say... Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. I would go... Do you know what? I'd probably go with Dubois. Would you? I think, I'd probably, I think Joyce gets hit too much. And I think... We haven't seen him hitting the pros He's yet. very robotic. Do you know what? Who, who's, he banged, who's he gone in with who banged him and you thought... There's no one, but you know what? He took a right hand on a Wild Fury on the card, and there was a reaction there. And the, the guy, guy with was, dreadlocks, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the guy who was fighting wasn't about much. Yeah, and yeah, I, but yeah. like he, the thing is, man, when you're in with guys who are 18, 19 stone, you only need to get hit once. Yeah. One puncher is a puncher. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. People go on about Fury. Ah, oh, Fury can't punch. He's fucking six for eight or six yeah. foot nine or whatever. He's 17, 18 I, stone. I ain't letting him hit me. I'm guessing if he hits you, it's going to hurt, you know? Yeah. So, like, I think, yeah, but I, yeah, I think probably. I'd probably go Dubois, but I mean, there's e either way, and regardless, because I don't think it's going to happen yeah. next. Certainly not next. Sam, right? agreed. I, I would, I would lean towards Joyce at today. Like, if it was this, probably again, the truth. I think he's seen a lot more than Dubois has. Yeah, it's a good time, point. Listen, I'm it's not saying point. it would win in the fight, but just no. I think it would. Off the back of like, listen, Dubois could spank him quick, out in a rap. Like, I, just, I, I, I think, it, I think it's a genuine like. Do you remember when Dubois nearly killed AJ? AJ, AJ Carter. Carter. Oh, Jesus Christ! That fucking right hand. Just like went down, like yeah. That was one that went on too long. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was one of those ones where the referee is like, "No, come on, get up." My mm -hmm. vision of that is they walk across the ring, and as if the boy walks out with his hand already yeah, full length of AJ, just into it. Yeah. head butts his fist and just goes yeah. to the ground. Whoa, I think with, with Joyce the boy, I think it's they're both at such various like varying ends of the spectrum in their career that it's kind. Of, I think it's just really difficult to make any kind of call on that fight. Any yeah. kind of call. Ramiz Mahmood, everyone's favourite math magician. That's his nickname. It's great. He wants to get an interview. He wants to get an interview. We're going to do it. Um, I spoke to him. I DM'd him, or he DM'd me. 
slid um, into his DMs. He slid into my DMs. Uh, we're going to do it the week after I get back from New York. He's a good man. He's a very good man. Shout out to Mesmer Moves. I really rate Rob's interviews. How did you get into boxing and when was your big break in boxing? We don't got any better questions than that. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you very much. Um, and second of all, I don't know about a big <laughs> break in boxing, but um, Un Abbas Hussein, shout out Un, who now works at Fight Hype. He um, asked me if I was, to be honest, man, like I just, if I wasn't doing my job now, I'd be still in boxing forums and writing and talking about the sport. And that's how Un kind of saw me. We were in one of the same forums and he asked me to do some writing and then just kind of went from there. A bit of written work, interviewing fighters on the phone, starting to go to shows and then just kind of went from there. Picked really. up and ran with it. Yeah, a little bit. And now you, would you think, do you think it's fair to say you're one of the most recognisable interviews in this country when it comes to boxing media? Probably voice-wise, yeah. yeah um, no one knows what you look like. No, you. which is great. Um, the, amount, the amount of people who... Um, who recognised me solely on the voice. Um, I mean, yeah. you were an actor, you should change it when you're in public. Just do interviews in one way, and then just when you, when you walk Well, no, around. because I get enough shit about my voice <laughs> anyway, so I'll just fucking speak the same way the whole time, <laughs> and hopefully, you know, people will stop, will leave me alone. But, um, no, yeah, so that was basically, it's very, it's, it's the same as how anybody does it, man. Just have a, a keen interest in the sport, and then it goes from there, really. Yep. I think you can only really do the job or certainly my job if you fucking really interested in the sport because otherwise you know it's not as glamorous it's, as people it's think it's tedious I remember Manchester when uh, you and I you sorted out myself and Craig a uh, hotel room yeah. that fuck do you remember what he did that night so we went to Manchester oh god Groves. he was out all night wasn't he he was fuck out all night you know. Eubank Groves happened and uh, Craig and I went up there without a hotel room <laughs> Rob managed to swing one for us so he's like look my hotel meet me I said yeah I'll, I'll meet you Rob Rob and I are sitting at Two in the morning having a great wine. We had a wine. glass of wine and we're, a pizza. We're having a wine and a pizza. Rob, Rob, so, it was, Robert Smith was It was right? so romantic. Yeah, it was good. And uh, you and I, you know, you, you were still uploading. You were doing your shit. You were do, working uh, and working. Craig was going to come meet us to find his hotel room. He's gone to a strip club. Walks in at five in the strip morning. Strip church. Strip church. So, strip yeah. church. Well, you and I are having a glass of red in the hotel with the referees. And, uh, and yeah, I had to stay awake to let him in. He turns up in the back of a cab. Kebab hanging out. He ain't got enough money for the cab. I <laughs> That's Craig Scott for you. <laughs> yeah, that was a good night. Uh, quality night, but that's that's Craig for you. But yeah, my point was to meet you're hard in working Scotland. until the early morning. Yeah, supposed to meet Craig in Scotland when I was out there. He didn't come because he had a hangover. <laughs> was that the night that Classic he tried to burn Mickey Hellyett's house down? Uh, was that that night or did last night? Uh, this was recently. It had to be probably be more specific with who he's trying <laughs> to fucking burn the house down. So obviously he writes for us. Uh, sorry, Sam, but he he, write, he writes for us and like you know. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Scott. <laughs> Scott. Craig and Snake. boxing s- <laughs> social. <laughs> yeah, it's not the first time we recorded Snake this week. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, surprisingly. But um, yeah, so he writes for us, and obviously, like, Craig's a really good mate of mine. Um, He's a wanker. <laughs> Uh, I made him remember when he was a good friend of ours you're, <laughs> a, when I made him you're a wanker and you're still a really good mate that's but, true um, yeah that is true but like I, I will sort of say to him sometimes like mate like you know you know you write for us and you got like boxing social and you think can you just not threaten to murder anyone tonight please on Twitter and he goes oh I mean, yeah no worries, no worries and then you turn your phone on at 2 o'clock in the morning and it's do you know when you know when Craig's really really drunk voice it's notes. when he start, yeah he sends you the voice notes and, start, and vows to eradicate people the what, whole bloodline once, once you hear eradicate, you think oh for fuck's sake Craig please you couldn't do who it was once. the reporter that he wanted to meet to eradicate their bloodline that was, so it was Raz from Raz Fight from Hype. Fight Hype yeah, yeah that was yeah <laughs> that was um, <laughs> That was yeah. Never, that was interesting. Being never change, Craig. <laughs> yeah, no, change a bit. Like just, <laughs> <laughs> just change a bit. He's on holiday now. Um, very well deserved holiday. Hope you're having a great time, um, Mr. Craig Scott. Boxing yeah. socials, Boxing Craig Scott. Scott. <laughs> Please comment. This is from uh, Woody. Woody one two three. Thank you, mate. Please comment on three issues I have with BT Sports and boxing, and it's basically things that I brought up in my my angry tweets last night. One, they have no ring walks. They go to the break during a ring walk. Two, they didn't do interviews with all the fu- because they pushed their time. So I see this. Lerone didn't get an interview. interview and Lerone, hit me up, man. We'll do an interview next week. Um, he's coming on the podcast if you just want to chill out a bit. We're going to ask before you start offering people now. But you have him first because you're bigger, and then we'll have him back where we've been backing him for eighteen months. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Lerone, I'll leave it up to you. And uh, <laughs> no social media be- bouts before eight pm, which is it is weird, isn't it? They they went live at eight pm, mm. and the non televised fights they're not even on. You know, Facebook or, or whatever. Yeah, like, you think, like, match you think that it's kind of strange. Somebody, um, well, abused me and asked me if I could, um, if I could ask like Hearn, like why 
their shows because sometimes their shows will start at 4.30 and then you only get the Facebook Live from 6. I'm like, fucking hell, like, at least it's there is long, a Facebook yeah. Live. We've been through something like this, though. Is it anything to do with ticket sales and... You know, audiences. I don't know. I'll tell you what, Alfie Price was in the undercard. I'd like to have seen Alfie Price. He, he was in there a couple of months ago. He got his shot on a big show. Didn't get to see it. Let me tell uh, you Umar, I don't know. Umar Sadiq, a guy on the rebuild, boxed on the undercard. So there's just no Didn't way to, to see, see these fights. As far as I'm aware. Buy a ticket to um, the show. No, but yeah. what if you live up north? Like you're a, you're a television platform. Your job is to, me and my house, to watch you. That's what you're bringing to me. So if you've got fights that they aren't... Bought, they brought you fights to your TV. They did, but what about your undercut fighters? They're, they're, they're not worthy of any, not any coverage at all. No, not yet. What's that? No, not yet. So what about... No, I'm Ed? not saying no. As them fighters... When yes. Eddie starts I at 6pm... I like them fighters. I'm not, that's not a person big at the yeah, fighters. Yeah, no, I understand but what in, you're saying. In, in, when you consider who he's putting on and who he wants to put on, in his mind, no, they're not good enough. No, they're not ready. No, they're not bringing him enough money. So when they're bringing him enough money, when they're popular enough, then they'll go on TV. We discussed this before with the... MTK, I like they did the live stream. For someone that sells 200, 300 tickets, it's fine to lose 60 tickets because people will just watch it on, on the live stream. For people that sell 80 tickets, they can't afford to lose 40 ticket sales. So no, they shouldn't be on TV because they're barely making the cut as it is. If you put them on TV, they don't sell less. These might be selling tickets, but maybe just not enough. That's a good point. Yeah, fair enough. Riku Heikler. Um, Shout out Riku, man, Everyone loves Riku. Riku's a great fellow. He's, he's, he's a good Riku, person. Riku, I will come on to this later. Riku is one of the unfortunate people who has encountered me on a Friday of a fight week where I'm really fucking tired and I don't have anything interesting to say. I'm now well rested after a week off. Hello Riku, I love you. You're a nice man. It'd be good to see you soon. You're a nice man. You're a right? nice man, Riku. <laughs> you are a nice man. He sent in... Um, so this is a bit where he messages you and goes, ask that cunt. Like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Ask that it says posh cunt. Actually. Oh right, okay, nice. Uh, they're quite long questions, but um, I'll, I'll he go does through. waffle a bit. Though. He does a bit. One more Is question. That just in case he late. does say something mean. <laughs> yeah, at least you've said does something. Waffle. <laughs> got, got to dig in at least, yeah. just in case. <laughs> yeah. um, no, he's got a few. I'll go with this one. I like this question. How can the new boxing media, video and written, yeah. work more collaboratively to improve the quality of the overall content for fans? As a side note, unlike most sports, the journalists. In boxing, haven't done any training, and there isn't means of sharing practice knowledge, knowledge and best practice. I get what you're saying. You, with all due respect, you came in from being a forum boy. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I guess the point is, what makes you qualified? But then the the, the thing is, if someone gives you the the job and that's your, then who who's to people determine are, who you qualify? You can say the, the same content, about a boxer itself. Yeah. What makes you qualified to get in the ring? Well, I want to, and someone is allowing me to. So it's the same as if you want. Like we just press record. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Our opinion is not more valid than a geezer that writes it all on a forum, but... I think that's what you people got to remember about media, it's only an opinion. It's only yeah, an opinion. I mean, like... Nothing <laughs> I say means anything, nothing you say. It's just opinions. It guys. is, though. I'm talking about the comments later about opinions. Oh, oh yeah, God. <laughs> um, but, no, I think, like... It's quite a convoluted question, difficult to kind of get my head around, but, like... I don't know, from what you've, what you've said there, like, yeah, I'm, I'm no more, I'm less qualified to talk about boxing than you, and certainly you, Richie, and, you know, that's just, is what it is, I mean, it's the sort of thing that you can only do through experience, but, like, I don't know, I think, generally speaking, it, it, the fucking, the proof's in the pudding, if people want to listen to your shit or watch your stuff, then they will, if they don't, then they won't, and then it's kind of, like, f I'm thankful, and not fortunate, but I'm thankful that it's not happened to me in a sense of, like, I've never... I didn't have to grind for three months with nobody watching my stuff or, no, or people massively negative overall. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of just carried on doing it. But, I mean, if you're not qualified to do it, then the fans will let you know pretty quickly. And then after that, I guess you have to make a decision as to what you want to do. But as far as kind of working together to improve the... I think boxing boxing fans and certainly people who watch the stuff that I do, that Coogan does, etc. You're fucking really lucky, man, to, to get that kind of insight into what goes on particularly the stuff that coogan does like the stuff that coogan does is very fucking raw it is i mean people take the piss it is very raw, raw. it is very raw. Like, how much like, stick do you reckon coogan gets for that intense raw beef <laughs> i'm sure he but, doesn't mind that much but like yeah that, that kind of access you don't get that kind of access and insight into football or nope. any other sport so like 100%. i think in its own way the way things are now does it helps already you already get like an affinity or you can have a favorite fighter based on interviews that they've done and never seen him fight mm -hmm. but i think you should always obviously look for ways to improve how how you do that i guess is is up to you really but i think that yeah i i'd actually like to say that's a question that can um open up to a point that umar ifl umar yes uh he was someone 
I per- there's a few people with it, but I personally gave stick to him in his <laughs> early days of interviewing. Yeah. And it came down to that kind of thing. I, I don't feel like he did enough research, maybe. Mm. Um, my on, my opinions of him, he didn't know enough about the small hall to be interviewing guys, and you could tell in his interviews. And I fucking don't. I and and you could there. tell because he would ask questions that weren't relevant to them. Yeah. And a couple of the boys were a bit insulted by it, which they told me, and, and that was the point we raised at the time. And what I will say is, since then, He's, in my opinion, the most improved interviewer in the country. There are some guys that have small channels like we did and stuff, and they're not good. You you, you had one that you pointed out. We won't say his name, but remember the guy you sent me his interview? He started talking about fighters in opposite weight class. Things yeah, that are yeah, completely yeah. irrelevant to a small hall yeah. boxer. But Umar improved massively, and he's been given a great opportunity. He was, flat, he was in New York the other day. Yeah, or, yeah, he went out for Corfu Khan. Yeah. And he did a he great did job. Really well he did a great really job. Well. I was speaking to Coogan about it. He did really well. And there. what more can you ask than someone to improve? At the end of the day, he was given an opportunity. Was he right to have the opportunity at the time? No one can know. You didn't know he was going to be good. He could have been absolute dog shit and embarrassed IFL of the channel. Mm. He's improved immensely and he's very good at his job. So I guess that's the only way you can really quality control is yeah, ensuring then, someone is improving. I, I agree. And I, I agree with everything that you said there. And it comes back to that. Like when he started, he was, you know, people like yourself and, and other people out there who we know were giving him shit. It could have went one of two ways with him, but he decided to go, you know, down the road. And he has improved an awful lot. He works very, very hard, which if you work very hard and you're interested in the sport as he is, then you can only improve, um, which he has done. I think, um, yeah, what you're talking about with asking irrelevant shit to fighters, particularly, I think one interview that he did with somebody, which is after they'd boxed, and yeah. he was asking, I think it was about Lomachenko Rigondo at yeah. the time. Yeah, that's not cool. Um, but I mean, he's only learning. And to, to be fair as well, going in at fucking IFL level, yeah. when you're learning is it's difficult, insane. man. Yeah. Like, like that's really, really tough. You've got a massive audience already. Yep. It's very, very busy. Day one, you're judged. Yeah, and Coogan has set the bar so fucking high that anybody who kind of falls below that on that channel, you're going to be noticed straight away. Coogan's got such a massive fan base and people who love his work, and rightly so, that if it falls underneath that kind of bracket of what they're accustomed to, you're going to get shit for it. But what Umar did, which some people wouldn't have done, was strip it back remodel and go again and he has improved an awful lot and yeah the, yep. the graft is still there and that's as long as he's got that as long as anybody's got that then you're going to improve 100 uh one more question we'll answer because we've got some more stuff to talk about afterwards believe it or not there is an elephant in this room so we will discuss that's a bit that. harsh man i never put weight on <laughs> wait nowhere near as much as me bro <laughs> um final question we'll do it from riku <coughs> we kind of touched on it earlier boxing is such, well we didn't we didn't boxing is such a fragmented sport i.e. lots of governing bodies, commissioners and promoters, etc. How can it tackle drugs in the sport as there isn't a common set of standards, enforcement of bans or protocols? And we touched on it, the amount of different organisations and bodies, but there is no one specific set out of rule. How do you enforce drug taking or drug takers rather than the drug? <laughs> Just make sure you've got a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, let them all do it and then, then, then you don't have to said. worry about getting yeah. caught. They're going to do it anyway. I've, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think a lot of them will do it. A lot of them are doing it. Top level, I'm not going to name fighters out on it. No, but I think course. a lot of top level fighters... I boxed for 15 years, didn't get it tested once. Through the ABAs, through, through all of my pro. All right, you probably get tested when you do your yearly medical. But if you're doing cycles, you can easily time your cycles. Yeah. You can. That's why some fighters will say no to certain fights at certain times. Why do they say no to a fight for... X amount of money in X amount of time doesn't suit your cycle. Mm. Can't come that, was a, that was a question actually, Lewis Ortiz. Is that why he hasn't accepted the Joshua? You can't fight? come off yeah, a cycle just like that fucking, either. Yeah, you'd have to ask Lewis Ortiz. Like, who knows why he's turned that fight down? He's saying that it's because like Jay, uh, Jay Jimenez, who um, manages a lot of those Cuban fighters, and who looked after Erislandi Lara. Uh, shout out Erislandi Lara. Giving um, you your daughter's name. All day. All day. Name your daughter after Erislandi Lara. All day Erislandi Lara. Little Erislandi. She's only 18 months now. Bless she her. is, man. She kept me up all fucking night though. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, he said that it was because the promoter said that he could get more money than five million and stuff. And you just think like, who fucking knows, man? But I agree with what Rich is saying. A lot of them are out there, are out there doing it. A lot, I believe, it's my opinion that the higher up in the sport you go, the more common it is. Certainly, whether or not you're doing it now, you've been exposed to it at some point of your career. Once you dope and once you use performance enhancing drugs, it isn't like that shit just vanishes. You always, like, you always, got that always be enhanced by it. Um, there is, again, I spoke to Hearn about it. He said that 
all right? It'll cost like 30 grand per fight to do proper VADA style testing. How the fuck, where is, where's that money coming from? Where can so you've got 10 fights that? on the card, what are you gonna do? Spend 300 grand on drug testing? It's just, it's, it, I'm no, I mean, no way condoning it, but why wouldn't a small fighter do that? Well, this is the thing, like, uh, Steve, Steve, Steve Goodman ain't got 30 grand per fight to, he ain't got 300 grand to test with them fighters. No. And, that, and a fighter can get all the way to, Perhaps even a British Com Commonwealth pro on one of Steve's shows, you could probably get yeah, to. Is it Commonwealth fights? Yeah, even an MTK show, you could get to a European. You know, yeah. I'm not condoning it. I'm not telling no, people to do it. But what but I'm saying is, is, what I'm saying is, people could. Why? Why? People again? Why wouldn't? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you? People are always going to look for the edge. Whatever, whatever fucking sport it is, like you, if there's money at stake, money is the point. Then you will always look for an edge, and because it is so prevalent, if you're not on it. Then yeah, you, you are, you're, like you're, you're, yeah, exactly. How, how can we stop it? How can we like, stop it? Maybe the board of control or or the powers that be need to be doing. But I mean, for example, you've got UCAD do like three months random testing and stuff. That's Dave Allen and Lucas Brown that's weren't testing enough, at all. Though. Dave's right. been testing. No, that's not good enough though. Random nah. testing ain't good enough. You're gonna be like. I'll take my chances, and then by the time you catch me, I've made a lot of money. And the thing is, like I just mentioned it, Dave Allen, like Dave, I think he's been drug tested three times in his career, and when he, you consider he's fought fucking a who's yo, who, yo, of drug drugs, cheats, people who have failed <laughs> tests, man. I mean, de like box Lucas Brown, Lucas Brown. Okay, I'm not insinuating anything, but Lucas Brown weighed in over a stone lighter than he did against Dillian White. Now that Dillian White fight was for the WBC Silver, so you're under the WBC clean boxing program. Yeah. And he came in 15 pounds heavier. When he boxed Dave, he hadn't been tested, he comes in a stone lighter. Now, take from that what you will. Mm -hmm. But doping, I believe, and a lot of other people believe, is so fucking rife in the sport, there's really nothing that you can do. This whole Jarrell Miller situation, in my opinion, he, is somebody who could hold a, a vital, vital key to kind of unlocking just how bad and how rife it is in the sport because yeah. he's fucked. Like I've seen all of this stuff about like the New York Athletic Commission, etc. Yes, I understand there could be some loophole, but what other governing body or what other sanctioned body is going to go? Yeah, you're all right, mate. Yeah. You, you, you weren't licensed. There'll be even more ridicule. Yeah, and exactly. So it's just it's just not going to happen. If somebody like Jerome Miller, who's bang to rights, he's you, you, he, EPO. You he, have yeah, to. Well, he come out and admitted it. So. You're bang to rights. My bad, y'all. Do you really? Yeah. My bad. I'm sorry, <laughs> but if you do, you really want to help the sport? If you really want to help the sport, and you're really fucking sorry, don't just say sorry. How did you do it? How do other people Who do it? Complicit. How did you get away with it? There are fucking, and I'm not going to name names, but there are doping funny, doctors. Funny thing is, I was thinking that I bet there's an agreement amongst all these fighters. Don't Whoever say nothing. gets caught, I'm you get caught, her, man. You always get caught on your own. The same thing. Let's all go to a big strong. meeting. All the boys in the top ten. We're all at a big meeting, right? Listen, <laughs> we'll all take our drugs. If any of you get caught. You're on your own. It's the same thing with Lance Armstrong. Like the whole fucking peloton when he was winning the world, when, winning the Tour de France, they were all at it. Like, mm -hmm. and it was that. It was that. It was you know, if you get caught, you're on your own. It's so rife, and everyone said it's it's a it's an even playing field. But if Jerome Miller can kind of really show some remorse, and by showing some remorse, he's not crying or saying you're sorry. Support the cause of stopping. Yes. Yes. How do you fucking? Stopping you're never gonna it. stop it. You're never ever gonna stop it. But how? Listen, man, that guy had, like, an average, I think, of 30% higher punch output <laughs> per round than anyone and else in the division. And he's, and he's 300 pounds. <laughs> that don't, th this is not an isolated incident. Okay, you might not have failed a test in the past, but you've never been subjected to this level of testing. Mm -hmm. So if you've been subjected to this level of testing now, it's not unreasonable to suspect that he's Your done this previously. Take out the fact that he already failed a fucking drugs test in 2014. Got removed from the WBC rankings because he didn't want to sign up to the clean boxing program. Now, these are, like... This would imply that he has been doping for a while. I'm not accusing him, but it would imply, imply that. So, help people. There are doping doctors who have come from track and field, who have helped Marion Jones and Justin Gatlin and people like that cheat. Olympic-style testing year-round, and these people are in year-long... The highest drug testing, the most stringent drug testing you could possibly have, these people have Get helped it. them evade it. And now they're working in boxing, where there's next to no testing. Somebody tweeted Dave after Dave said that um, he'd not been tested for the Allen fight and saying, mate, I work in wheelchair tennis or something and I've been taking blood six months this year, <laughs> six times this year already. If that's wheelchair tennis and you're getting that level of testing. Why are you not testing the same people when so you're punching put, them in the head? Who yeah. put this number that there's been 30 grand for a fight? Hearn. Hearn told who's... me it was 30 grand. 30 grand for that kind of level of testing per Yeah, so the higher level. The I'm highest level of VADA testing. Like what, so, take into consideration, just, police what can what stop you on the side of the road and stick something is, in your mouth and you can get a small little one. 
But there's no there's no way to just have what I'm saying all is all drugs covered is it beyond by the realms of possibility you can find a test cheaper than thirty grand a fight. I mean he s- he says point. no but I mean put it this way. I know Hans. Well, he that. said that. I don't know, I know words videos. come out of his mouth into your That's ears. exactly what he said. But if there's, and for people who haven't seen that, check out <laughs> Boxing Social. For, um, but um, if it's not, regardless of what Hans says, 30 grand a fight, 100 grand a fight, 3 million a fight, 10 quid a fight, there will always be a way to beat the test. Lance Armstrong was the most tested athlete in the world for seven years, and he cheated those whole seven years. He failed a couple of tests, and they covered it up with ointments and this, that, and the other, but he was fucking cheating the whole time. I don't buy into this bullshit of like, well, that fight has never failed a test. This fight has never failed a test. Lance Armstrong never failed a test. Yeah. Like, Dillian White has come out and started talking about therapeutic usage exemptions. This is what Gerald Miller got himself yeah, into hot water. Yeah. At the press, it's, it's funny, Gerald Miller, in hindsight, knew all of this shit about yeah. these, <laughs> these drugs that AJ is supposedly taking, and then he gets popped yeah. a few months later. But like, doping is so bad in sport in general, but boxing the testing that happens is just so fucking lax when you consider the dangers in the sport what it, the sport it, is yeah it will take somebody to get killed for people to have a serious look at it people, and then still, yeah, but all that no, people no, will no, still no, carry no, on doing all it that, all that would do be the one that did the killing would then think oh fuck i feel a bit bad now but yeah. people and then probably move on with their life people were, other people would still do it but i think like a good a good start would be who who is facilitating this use? Who is putting fights? If you're a fighter, I reckon there's a go-to person. There is many Every, go-to people. Yeah, everyone knows. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you want that, you go to him. What are you trying to do? Increase your stamina. Go do to you him. go to him? What is it or strength you go to after? Go to him. Oh, you, uh, need, to, you need to. You need to. You need to cut how much weight? Go to yeah, him. Yeah. Like there's a. There's, Send me numbers. It's not really difficult guy. to find out who these people are. Clembutrol. Uh, Clembutrol. Yeah. There's all sorts Makes of stuff. Meat. You can you can do that on a cycle as well. Yeah. That'll be out of your body in a week. Happy days. I was just thinking, it's it's, it's a sport. It's a problem that's never ever going to go away. But there are things that you can do to kind of tighten it up. Yeah. Testing somebody who's failed two drug tests before and after the biggest fights of his career in Lucas Brown, for example, would be a good start. Good point. Um. <laughs> that was a very, that was a very intentional um. Drum roll, please. That was a drum roll, very bad one. How you doing? <laughs> Your life is no. very sad. It's very bad. <laughs> this is the highlight of my life. Um, We've let's been talking put, about this all week. <laughs> let's put some meat on the bones of the next and final conversation of the day. New Age Boxing Podcast with Martin Theobald, who's a good friend of both of ours, let's yes, say. he is, yeah. Had lunch with Martin. Well, we had coffee. We were going to have lunch. We were having coffee on Wednesday. But we yeah, shout out Martin. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Stern love you. And Terry Chapandama. Shout out Terry Chapandama. Who's... I've, I said it, and I publicly said it, and I said it to him personally. He's been a guy that I've... Since we came into boxing, me, Fight Talk, he, uh, he backed us, and he's always defended <coughs> us, and put us, put us out there, and he's a friend. He's a good bloke. <sighs> He did something last week, which um, it's questionable. You know, let's let's put it that way. From from an outsider whose friends I consider you a friend, I consider Terry a friend. He said some personal shit about you um, in a in his public forum, which was their podcast. Um, you know, he felt a certain type of way that he was offended by you, and you'd what's the way to put it? You'd, you'd mugged him off basically. You'd, you'd You'd insulted him, you'd, yeah, you treated him however, made him feel a certain type of way to say certain things. Um, I felt that you had a right to reply, and I told Martin the day before that, you know, I was going to have you on, I felt, as a man, you need a right to reply to a lot of the things he said. First of all, you know, from yourself, you were, first you heard about it, um, your phone goes off, you get a few messages, I thought this geezer said about you. I bet that, talk me through, that's a bit weird, isn't it? No comment. <laughs> No, um, Come not to talk about that. No, like um, look, that wraps up the fight talk boxing. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> like for listening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Monday last week was my first day off in a number of, of weeks. I had a you know a nice lie-in planned and a bit of time with the family, etc. And yeah, I woke up to a bunch of messages and links um, from the podcast of, of you know Terry's rant. Podcast you've been on. Previously. Podcast I've been on. A live show that I've also been to and paid good hard-earned money to attend um but yeah I, do you know what it was very strange and i've spoken to you about this um privately um and i will say the same thing look i woke up on that monday not aware that i had any problem with terry um i'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite and, and make out like i have some massive problem with him or like i have like a big 
long-standing issue with him because I don't. I have an issue with what he was saying on the podcast. A lot of it is best case scenario, misinformed, worst case scenario, just lying. Um, but I don't have any problem with Terry. Like uh, he, the last time I spoke to Terry was Christmas day. I messaged Terry to wish him a Merry Christmas. Um, I don't do group messages. You would have got a message on Christmas Day, as did a lot of people who were close mates. Richie, you'll get one this year. He <laughs> said that earlier. I promise. Have oh, you got my number? <laughs> save it. Give me your phone. I'll save it I now. Better, I better check my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> but like the last, and I messaged Terry and kind of said to him like, "Merry Christmas, blah blah blah. Have a good day." He replies, "You know, have a good day with your family. Make those memories, blah blah blah." Now, the incident you're referring to was Friday at the weigh-in for the Alan Brown Alan Brown show and again kind of like what I mentioned earlier if you're listening and you see me on a Friday before the show chances are I've worked quite a lot of hours that week and I'm probably the not work out the press I'm not my best at, at the when it comes to Friday night like but or Friday afternoon um that Friday was particularly bad because we had Lomachenko crawler the week before which meant that I had somebody in LA sending me footage the week before which i was then putting up i mean after lomachenko crawler i went to sleep at 11 in the morning and then we rolled on the next week with alan brown and then con crawford which i was also getting footage from new york so i was like a bit of a zombie on the friday now the story that terry has is that i went over um shook rob martin's hand shout out the mayor of brixton always supporting fighters really lovely guy um really really top boxing man people like him are exactly why boxing can carry on like whether it's kind of you know sometimes it goes in fashion and, and blah yeah. blah blah people like him keep it going all year round and all the time so shout out rob martin and also thomas lyons was there shout out thomas lyons don't know you as much as as rob martin but you're all right too um, did you I, put your thumbs up to this? yeah thumbs up. <laughs> so i went over to rob martin to shake his hand um and tom Tom Lyons was there as well and he kind of there was a lot of awkward where he didn't know which hand I was going to shake and I'm working at the end of the day so I'm not actually I'm there to quickly shake your hand and fuck off and do my work mm -hmm. which is what I'm you know paid to do I didn't see Terry there now Terry's version of events is that I came over I shook Rob's hand and Tom's hand and then essentially ignored him mm -hmm. now that's not the case whether I understand you spoke to Rob Martin since, and Rob yeah, said spoke that, to Rob Friday, and Rob said that you know that's what it looks like to him. Yeah, which, he said his opinion it looked like you intentionally. Yeah, Rob which Terry. I mean, I I've no reason to disbelieve him. As I said, just, he's an honest fella. So the only thing that I can say is that I didn't see Terry there, and I wasn't really thinking too much about it. And you know, that's basically it. Now, ten minutes later, I'm sitting down on my laptop uploading. It is a busy job. You do have to do interviews and then put them out. I look to the left and I see Terry there. And I'm thinking like, right, okay, shit. I need to title this. It's an Adam Smith interview. I need to title it. Get it up. At the time, I was thinking, right, I haven't spoke to Terry in a while. He's a mate. I'll go over to him and say hello. But much the same as if you were there, I wouldn't go over. I'd think, all right, Sam's there. I need to speak to him for five minutes, six minutes, whatever. I can't do that then because I'm working. The weigh-in is literally going on. So I'm thinking, right, I'll catch him afterwards. So I go off and I do my business, go to try and find him afterwards, he's not there. I, I, don't, I, I wasn't searching your call for him, I kind of looked around, he wasn't there, I was thinking, alright, I'll catch up with him some other time. Um, and then, yeah, I, that, that, that's basically it. I mean, I know he said on the podcast that he'd been, you know, he, he kind of said something like, you know my feelings on Rob, and I've said it on here numerous times about Boxing Social. He was of the opinion that I was going to go over to him and confront him, or that I had some issue with what he'd said, which is why I'd done this. I have not listened to their podcast. And I said this to Martin, as much as I like Martin and Andy and did like Terry, like I just don't have two hours to listen to somebody's podcast when I've got the workload that I've got and a family. Like my missus would fucking kill me. She wanted to kill me for coming here today, let alone listening to somebody else's stuff. So like I wasn't going, had I have seen him, I wouldn't have been like, oh, Terry, I heard you've been talking shit because I didn't know that. Because Terry's got my number, and the last time I spoke to him was Christmas Day, and I'd spoken to him kind of intermittently, not that often, for probably six months-ish before. Obviously, I did the podcast, etc. So, like, I would think that if he had a problem with anything that I'd done or was doing, he would sure. have messaged me or called me, and, you know, Terry's not short of a word or two, <laughs> which we've seen. Yeah. But, like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't have expected him to have kind of slated me. I don't know what he said, because again, I've not gone back and listened to it. 
But like, I wouldn't have expected him to have an issue with me, voice it on the podcast, and then not talk to me about it, or mm-hmm. message me, or, or say whatever, because I considered him a friend. And like, on the Monday morning, I was getting this stuff, and I was thinking like, well, that's a bit strange. And then I listened to it, and I thought, do you know what, I did think on the day when I saw him at the uh, workout, and then he wasn't there afterwards, I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't think that I fucking like, deliberately mugged him off. But while we're on the subject, the last time I saw Terry was after the Royal Albert Hall show where um, he was trying to speak to David Hay after the show and I called out for him, I went Terry and he didn't hear me, he carried on doing what he was doing and I was busy rushing around because I needed to go try and get interviews, didn't think anything of it, certainly didn't go on my podcast and say I fucking saw Terry and he fucking ignored me, like because you know you're busy, you're doing your own thing and, and you kind of get on with it, so that that's the only part where I'm really properly willing to address because I mean, I trust Rob Mine if he thinks that it looked awkward. Yeah, so I, 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 I can only, yeah, 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 I, I, I can only apologise on that behalf on, mm-hmm. because it wasn't a deliberate slight, and I was going to go and say hello to Terry afterwards, but I I missed him, and it was not anything intentional. I looked at him as you know, oh, there's a mate over there. I'll go and see him when I'm not like literally in the process of uploading something. Mm-hmm. What about the? He says after that, you then text Martin. And said, "Can I come on the podcast?" Yeah, so like, I wanted to, I've wanted to do a podcast for a while. Like our podcast that we were doing, so we've moved office. Now our studio was in our office, so now we've moved office. Our studio is not set up, so we haven't been able to do the podcast. So the last pod I done was like two months ago with Coogan. Um, so I haven't done one since, and like because I hadn't had any time off, I kind of, I got to a point, and the last time I went on the Definitely. Yusuf Bellu stuff. You have to go. You carry on, I said. Oh, I thought you were going to slip away. <laughs> yeah, I was a boring rich already. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like the last, when I did their podcast, it was after Usyk Bellew. And again, that was after two bi- really busy weeks where I was, when you work in boxing and particularly like online media, the shit, I mean, Twitter and YouTube is not a fucking happy place generally. <laughs> no, <it's> like <laughs> My missus always said it's poisonous. It's, it's really not Twitter good. And like, I'm just, I'm constantly on it. And so sometimes when you see the same people and boxing's full of so much bullshit, that you just need a bit of a rant and a break and not thinking anything of it. I messaged Martin like I did before, well, before I came on the other time and said, the message is literally, all right, mate, have you got room for me on the podcast? Because I wanted to go in and talk about Alan Brown because obviously that fight was happening the next day at the time. Yeah, yeah. And then the drug stuff as well, like the, the Miller stuff. I wanted to kind of go and blow off some steam, get out of my system and then have the week off and like spend some time with my family and relax and stuff. So I was just wanting to do a podcast. Now, Martin then went away, spoke to the guys, come back and said, look, they Terry's, had one for a couple of weeks. Terry said, you're a cunt. No, he didn't really. <laughs> um, he said that, you know, they've not had one in a few weeks. It's going to be like a longer one. So we'll do another one. I said, okay, no problem. I didn't think anything of it. Didn't think like, oh, Terry's obviously, because at the time I was thinking, I, it didn't even occur to me that there was a problem. Yeah. And then obviously Monday morning I wake up and I've been sent the link to it by various people throughout the whole day, man. It's like my first day off, like just getting people ringing me and messaging me about stuff that, to be fair, I considered a friend who was slagging me off and coming out with some absolute nonsense about a lot of stuff that, as I said earlier, he's either misinformed about or he's just deliberately lying about. So that's kind of my position on it. But as I say, I've, I've got no... I'm not going to sit here and make out like I've got a big problem with Terry because at the end of the day, I didn't beforehand. I just have a problem with... Maybe we can get you on a Goodwin show. Huh? I can get used to on a good one show. Oh, I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> Graham, you're good for four rounder? <laughs> four rounds of what? <laughs> <laughs> shout at each can other. you sell a ticket? Just shout at each other. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who would buy tickets to watch me get punched in. <laughs> but, so yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of it really. I mean, I'll answer whatever you want to ask me about the whole situation, but I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not going to sit not, here I'm and not, grow off on one. No, no, no I'm, I'm not intentionally going to put some not shit not including the last 15 minutes then <laughs> I'm not going to go off on one not including the last 10 minutes of it <laughs> no I just I, I try listen I know you're not going to be mates again I can't no no I mean, went, obviously not yeah but I mean, if there was any chance of us like reconciling which there probably wasn't I did call Terry 12 times on the Monday between 10 and 3 o'clock just to figure out what was going on I, I literally messaged him and was like mate this is all like news to me like I, I, in my head I was thinking like because after, when I said about going on the podcast, I was thinking like, oh, when I see Terry, I apologise for missing him. But not like ignore him, but missing him accidentally mm. in the show, blah, blah, blah. So I sort of messaged him and said like, what the fuck, man? Like some of the stuff you're saying is like, I think I, I said it's out of order or blah, 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 blah. 
and Terry just wouldn't answer the phone to me. He said that he's with family and we can do it tomorrow if you want. And I was kind of thinking, you know what, man? Like, I considered you a friend. If I fell out with you, for example, I'd, I'd think if you don't want to sort it out straight away, then it obviously doesn't mean anything yeah, to you. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not going to go chasing somebody to 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 clear something up. That's their issue. This is Terry's problem. I don't have a problem with him. I just have a problem with what he said. I don't think you can actually say any fairer than that, to be honest. So that's all you can say in a situation. Hope everyone stayed and listened to this whole thing. Just oh, yeah, probably yeah. Not. Just that for them to go, you, Terry's But while we're on the subject, <laughs> <laughs> it's some of the stuff he was saying was, was bollocks. I was not fired by Michelle Joy Phelps. Anybody who knows me can attest to that. Yep. I do not Jimmy numbers on YouTube. All of our numbers are completely organic. Um, I have, I've said to you, Jimmy Numbers. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just <laughs> that should be his name in my phone, so, Jimmy Numbers. Do you know what? It makes me sound like a bookmaker from The Departed or something. Hey, yeah. go, go and get Jimmy the Numbers in here. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. was it Bugsy Malone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's but Jimmy like, Numbers? Like he, do you know what? He collared Coogan um, at the MTK show on Friday, and he obviously didn't know beforehand because I don't think he would have said to Coogan what he said. Me and Coogan are really good mates now. We speak most days, if not every day, on the phone. And he kind of brought up to Coogan that me, Jimmy, and the numbers, and me this and me that. And Coogan basically said, look, I know what stuff he puts out. I know when he puts it out. And the, the numbers all add up and they all make mm. sense. Like, And then Terry apparently tried to tell Coogan about how the YouTube algorithm works. And, you know, when you're somebody like Coogan who's made his fucking living off the YouTube algorithm made for the his last millions. night. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> Coogan, I hope he doesn't mind me kind of mentioning that, but... I think he can attest to the fact that what we're doing is, is kind of... I don't of know if Kuga listens, actually. Yeah, he'll listen to this, for sure. Because his mates are, eh? Well, there we go. Um, but, like, yeah, I think he can attest to that. Um, Richie Gray is leaving. Richie Gray is leaving the building. I've bored him. He's got to go. go. Nice to oh, meet sitting outside. <laughs> Patiently. Christmas Day. <laughs> Christmas. I'll, I'll send if not, I'm going to come and do a massive random <laughs> <laughs> That Rob Tebbert. No, where's my Christmas message? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Richie. I will speak to you soon. Take Thanks for having me. You've only got one hand. How are you going to open the door? Uh, Do you want a hand? Oh, great. Yeah, real quickly. All right, real quickly. I'll get the door for you. Yeah, continue what you were saying, Robert. Uh, well, it's just a bit weird to talk to an empty seat. Why? No, no, one, no one knows. Well, I mean, I've told to them now. Before. Rich, talk. I'm going for a piss. <laughs> See you later. But like, I guess like the only thing that I will say about it further than the 15 minutes I've already spent talking about it was... 15 minutes and 20 seconds. The issue that I have is... Other than the fact that Terry's always been very complimentary and very supportive to me, whether it's in person or via WhatsApp or whatever, um, he was one of the first people in boxing to really give me credit on their same, podcast, same which is is fantastic. And I mean, I remember at the time, like when I worked for Behind the Gloves, the praise and the credit from him and Martin, and not so much Andy because Andy's obviously not necessarily the the hardcore boxing guy. He's fair yeah. to say meant all meant the world to me at the time like i was really kind of starting off in boxing and you know getting a pat on the back from people was, was a big thing like, yeah. it's not that it's not now but certainly when you're starting it's really good 100%. and like i would have expected him to to certainly message me if he thought there was an issue i didn't realize there was one and then the next day i think it's you know it's not beyond reasonable to expect him to answer the phone when i've you know felt like i've been slighted but with the kind of the Jimmy and the numbers and calling me a snake and a rat and whatever, I think there's probably, there's probably, there's less, uh, like counting, there's less than 10 people in the sport who I've fallen out with, but there's also less than 10 people in the sport I would consider a friend, a proper friend. You're yeah. one of them. Yeah. Craig Scott's another one. I'm not going to go through all of them. These but, are my friends. <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? No, so I like, understand. So of those, outside of those 20 people, you're all kind of associates, like some yeah. better associates yeah. than others, but like I consider Terry like a kind of distant friend. We'd always got on well, as I said, message him on Christmas. But like the stuff that he said, and I think like if you've dealt with me, you'll kind of know, you know, one way or the other, really, which will I'll leave up to you. But I thought we were always cool. The issue, the big issue, the overbearing issue that I have is that I feel with the whole Jimmy and numbers stuff, which is. I mean, I could prove that that's not true by releasing screenshots and analytics and shit, but I'm not going to do that because I don't feel like the need to... I don't need to do that. Yeah. If you know me, you know... And, you know, I dare say, if you know Terry, then you know. So, but the issue I have is boxing, working the hours that I work has cost me a lot. Like, I'm a fucking mess. I know Han likes to mention it in the interviews <laughs> and that, but I have put on, like, four stone in, like, just over two years. I eat, like, shit. 
I don't get to spend as much time at home as I want to, which then affects my relationship with my missus and my daughter. Like, me and my daughter are nowhere near as close as I'd like to be because I'm always busy, I'm always fucking working. Terry kind of trashing the work that I've done and trying to imply that I'm cheating the system or that I'm fucking... That must hurt a little bit. Yeah, man, because... Mate, if it was as easy as buying numbers or PDs for views or whatever he was talking about... <laughs> it's a good term. Now. Yeah, yeah, it is, but like... <laughs> If, if it was as easy as that, do you know what? I would have done that 10 months ago, 11 months ago when I started a boxing social and I would have spent a bit more time at home. Yeah. Don't devalue the work that I'm doing, which is coming at the cost of me having a family life. So that's that upset me and that angered me at the time. But when Terry wouldn't answer the phone and, you know, not to, I didn't need him to confirm anything because at the end of the day, I know the truth and I dare say he knows the truth as well, but he's trying to get some sort of reaction. Then... I'm not really asked about it now. Yeah. I'll say my piece on it. I'm not going to sit here and slag him off because I have no reason to. Yeah, what, what I said to him was, no man in the world can tell another man how he should feel at certain times. Mm. If he felt disrespected for you, he clearly did. You, you've clearly disrespected him in his head. Like, mm. that can't be... There's, yeah, I agree. There's no two ways I about agree. it. So, no one can tell you how to react in certain situations. He's gone on with both barrels. Yeah. Um, he stands by what he said as last time, last time I spoke to him, but... Like I said to him, some of the things were, you know, they, they came across low, but he was the one who felt the way he felt and felt disrespected. So it's well, really my question is to... really like, I mean, he he speaks about it on the podcast of kind of me speaking to him all the time when I was unemployed and, and when I didn't have my job, which isn't actually correct. I mean, we we spoke probably as often as I would speak to a lot of people in boxing, um, but he, him kind of sort of saying that, saying these things, it's just I don't know, man. It's it's, it's tough, really, to get your head around it. Like, if you think I'm shit at my job or that I'm a cunt, then fine. Like, that's up to you. That's what you think. But, like, you can't pick up the phone to tell me or you can't message me. Mm. And then when I call you the next day, you can't answer the phone. And it's like, you know what, man? That's fine. If that's how you feel, and that, like, I know the truth. As I say, I dare say he knows the truth. Mm. And the only opinion I really care about are those 10 or less people who know me in the sport, who are friends with me. Yeah. So... As yeah. I say, I'm not going to trash Terry. He's entitled to his opinion. But what I will say is there's a difference between opinion and passing off something as fact, which is not true. Yep, it's fair enough. Don't think you can say much more on that, my friend. Shout out Martin and Andy, because I do like the podcast. Mm -hmm. I've paid money to go and watch the live show. Dave Allen, when Dave Allen was fucking, before he knocked out Nick Webb, I paid for Dave's Uber from Wembley to fucking Old Street to get him there. Like... Well, he's, too, he's too big for a cab or a train or something now. But Dave at the time didn't know how to use Uber. Fuck. Didn't know how to use it. So I had to book it on my phone and fucking get <laughs> in there. It's an absolute nightmare. But like, I said to somebody on Twitter who was like, I'm never watching it again. Like, don't fucking do that on my behalf. And certainly yeah, pe not, people have not a... on, stuff, on something that Terry said either. Because Martin and Andy still do the podcast, well, regularly or every week. It's still a good podcast. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have asked to go. I'm not Terry's gonna... a knowledgeable man. Like... That when it comes to boxing's intricacies, he, I, I enjoy their pod. Everyone knows how I feel about them. They're, they're, people have this misguided loyalty thing where they go, well, if they back Terry, I'll fuck boxing, boxing yeah, social, I, Rob. I, I don't. People have this weird thing, don't they? It's, it's like tribal. Yeah. If they're a fan of New Age now, they have to hate you. Or vice this is the thing. Like, I'm not, I don't really care about that at all. Like, if you, <laughs> if you believe what he's saying beyond i mean if you believe him that i'm a prick then yeah that's fair enough i, I, I think you're a prick fuck, cheers mate nice one <laughs> get me on it for them views though then fuck it them <laughs> pussy pussy views. numbers yeah. what was it coogan pussy pussy and pussy and i'll break your bent legs coogan but um like if you believe that without knowing me or having anything then that's on you i don't really care the people who know me i'd like to think think different or maybe they don't but if you know me you have basis to make an opinion yeah but yeah, the stuff that he's saying that is clearly inaccurate and clearly not true, th that's not an opinion. That's just bollocks. So, uh, you know, I would have been happy to address it with him um, during one of the 12 times I tried to call him. But he wasn't interested, so life goes on. Life does go on. So does this fucking podcast. How long do you reckon it is? I don't know. Uh, hour and a half, hour and hour, two and a half, maybe? Two I don't know. Two and a half. You do fucking waffles, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. This is the thing. This is what happens when I'm well rested. Yeah. yeah. If we'd have done fuck. the podcast I need last to get Sunday, you day, yeah. yeah, I'd have been fucked. I need to get your day after fight week so you, don't, so you shut the fuck up again. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, as I say, shout out to Martin and Andy. Particularly Martin. I mean, I had coffee with Martin on Wednesday. Yeah. And, um, no, it's good who knows what's what. But yeah, keep listening to the podcast if you enjoy it. Don't cancel on my behalf. Amen. Amen. Rob, thank you very much. You've gone through a whole, not even a whole pack, 
Half a pack. Nah, that's more than fuck off. That's at least three quarters <laughs> of whatever they are. Chocolate swizzles. They are called Rurki Waffle. They Polish. They're like, yeah, they're Polish like wafer rolls. Wafer rolls with hazelnut chocolate filling. Nut cream, they're called. <laughs> Partial to a bit of nut cream. <laughs> Love a bit of nut cream. So well, Tob, t- Tob, Teb is gonna take his nut cream home, <laughs> and um, you're gonna get home. You're, not gonna, you're gonna miss Chelsea now, aren't you? Yeah, I'll be on when I'm on get the train. Get mauled at home to the Manx, but home or away, away. Old Trafford, yeah. Really you're not at the pop anyway, man. Don't worry about it. But um, yeah, this has been a, it's been an eye opener. Thank you very much for your insight, which is far more than myself's or Richie's. One, no, definitely not. But one thing we'll say before I go. Sorry, it's taken this to get me to come here. Yeah, a bit the, disrespectful. The, dif- really. the difference being. The New Age podcast is in Milton Keynes. It's down the road, isn't it? Which is 20 minutes from Bedford, which is where I live. Mm-hmm. This has taken me two hours, 15 minutes to get here. Probably it will take me about the same to get back. That's the only reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love, I know, to, I love know. to come back on. I, I, see the, I see the hard work you put in, my friend. Yeah, and, you know, I'd like to think that, you know, I try and do what I can for people. Um, and... Yeah, but no, thanks for having me on, man. Like, yeah. Anytime, mate. You good. can bring your nut cream anytime you <laughs> like. I'm going to keep the nut cream to myself. <laughs> it's been the Fight Talk podcast, Fight Talk boxing podcast, I should say. Because... Fight Talk boxing social podcast. No, fuck off. <laughs> Get out of it. Um, now, thank you very much for listening. If you've got this far, then pff, you're a better man than me because I wouldn't listen this far into this cunt. <laughs> um, no, I appreciate all your ears and all your time. Thank you very much. And probably, hopefully, maybe, definitely, possibly back soon.